Are we airborne yet with the dragon fire? I still don't have a visual. Uh, Sarge? Some, something's like going on. Um, we're definitely having some technical difficulties. God damn it, Private. Can we get the bird in the air? The primary target is about to accomplish the mission. Okay, okay, okay. We have flight. Where is he now and what mission is he on? He's attempting to beat all the Call of Duty campaigns on Veteran. What's so bad about that? How many are there anyway? God damn it, Private! There's 40 unique ones! It's never been done, never been attempted, and never will be done if we can put a stop to it! Whoa, 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 whoa! There's 40? You're telling me you beat the entire main series and the obscure ones? Yup. Even the corny spin-offs? Yup. Um, what about that god-awful PS Vita title? You got it! My god, even those ancient Java flip phone games? Uh-huh! You're lying! There's no way he beat Call of Duty 2 for the pocket PC! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Careful how fast you're saying that, but yes! You're telling me he beat that Rainbow Six COD? That Pokemon Go CSGO bullshit? I'm assuming you're talking about Call of Duty Siege and Call of Duty Global Operations, but those are a little bit complicated. Well, son of a bitch! We gotta find this Mo! I think I got something up here. Head in there and we can see what we can find. I'm not really seeing all that much. Wait, wait, I think I see something. My name's Jeff and it's true. I did beat all the campaigns on veteran. Call of Duty, an overhated but beloved series of mine that has a pretty lengthy catalog of games as you can see by the title of the video. Almost every game in the franchise has the iconic game mode of the single player campaign story mode. Some think the campaign exists purely to check a box and is filler compared to the holy multiplayer mode, which don't get me wrong I love, but the reason I campaign so hard for campaigns is with the vicious COD cycle, multiplayer can become obsolete in a year or two, that or become hacked and it's not even playable. Campaign you can always go back to it, it's always there for you. It's timeless. It's no secret Call of Duty has one of the most toxic fan bases out there whose fans send incredibly mixed signals every year on what they want from the next title, especially multiplayer. That's why I say forget all that noise, let's play a game mode that's a cinematic, playable movie that introduces you to iconic, memorable characters, lets you get immersed and fight in wars with insane stakes, crazy action, and it's all possible from the seat of your couch. Even though I was a Wii COD gamer for years, I eventually upgraded Xbox and next gen and I bought game after game. I grew a strong love for the series, but when I completed the games I never did it on veteran and I always envy people who did. So as you can see in the beginning skit, I set out on a challenge, I wanted to beat every single game on veteran. Once I decided this was going to be the challenge that I'm going to commit all my effort towards, I did so much research, I did a deep dive on the series, I uncovered so many hidden games, obscure titles, some real deep cuts. I found out so much Call of Duty lore and info that I bet a lot of people don't even know, and some of these games that I play, I guarantee that you've never even heard of. I became really overwhelmed with my findings and I knew I had to organize, so I decided to do all the unique campaigns, all the different stories out there. I established some strict rules, I made a detailed spreadsheet, and I'm making this video that in the beginning will talk about my journey, but then go into a thorough, detailed breakdown of all 40 games. First, let's start with the final numbers calculated. Numbers came out to be 16 main series games, 12 spinoffs, 2 remastered games, 40 unique campaigns, and of those 40, 3 are unplayable, 1 is a DLC campaign, 15 games are ports that branch off from the main series games with different stories. I played all these 40 games across 12 different consoles, some mobile, some not, and I calculated a mission count of about 617 missions, with 54 plus of those being unplayable. I'll explain, it gets a little complicated.
like I said with the rules, the biggest one is it had to be a completely unique campaign. It could be a port, but the story had to be unique to itself. Some of these main series games have three or four ports per game with all completely different storylines. Now this doesn't include like PS3 versus 360 copies or one versus PS4 copies because all the modern CODs have identical ports. Surprisingly no Wii titles, even with how notoriously bizarre they are, they're all identical with very few differences. Even Modern Warfare Reflex Edition with a different name, they're just all pretty much the same. Now these games listed are all technically separate releases but they just don't include campaign modes, but they might be discussed. I really debated over this one but I had to throw the fat hammer on Call of Robloxia. I mean, it's so close, yet so far. More seriously though, there are some oddball titles that maybe are obvious to some, not to others, that you think are games or have store modes, but don't. Legends of War or Elite Squad is just previous names for COD Mobile. Games like Call of Duty War Chest, Call of Duty War Collection, Call of Duty Trilogy, those are just game bundles. There are apps used in conjunction with Call of Duty, like Call of Duty Elite and the Companion app. They're not games. If you really thought the Call of Duty Endowment was a game, you're wrong. It's just an organization that gives back to the vets, not a game. There's Call of Duty Battle Tank, a really weird old app that's used with an RC COD tank toy. Believable knockoffs like old Call of Duty Toxica and Call of Duty 2 Stalingrad, which are just knockoff modded versions of other games, not actual Call of Duty titles. And with that said, any knockoffs that you see everywhere, those obviously are not Call of Duty games. And of course, I'm not counting the several canceled games out there. And there's Call of Duty board games. Some are real, some got canceled, but I was going to count them as a game, but I had to draw the line. And also, before you rail me on it, three of these games, like I said, are unplayable. They're inaccessible. I, I count them for the 40 because there are 40 unique campaigns. They're just completely inaccessible. I'll explain. Now everyone knows veteran is usually the hardest difficulty. You're normally greeted by the beaten up looking soldier with the saying, you will not survive. But what does veteran really mean? I've compiled a list of what I think are the main inhibitors added to your game once you choose the veteran difficulty listed to my side. Some games handle the difficulty different with weird crutches here and there, some disabling aim assist, which I wasn't going to use in the beginning, but I already made it hard enough with veterans, so I kept it. Initially I was going to, but I drew the rule that I'm doing no difficulty above veteran. There are a few. There's survival mode and roads to victory, there's realistic in Black Ops 3, there's specialist and YOLO mode in Infinite Warfare, and there's realism and Modern Warfare 2019. None of those are counted. My rule was up to veteran. There are several games that don't have a veteran, but I played their hardest difficulty, usually harder or hardened. The rule was up to, not past veteran. Now, there will be some naysayers out there that don't believe that I've beaten all these games on veteran, but I'll show some proof on screen, and you can check out my gamertag Earlober for achievement proof. Note these games are brutally hard, some of my hardest gaming experiences ever, and I'm not a pro, and sometimes I complain about stuff, that I bring upon myself by choosing veteran, but just take what I say with a grain of salt. And at the end of the video, I will rank all 40 games in terms of difficulty. So my plan was I knew I had 40 games to beat, so I had to set a quota of what I thought was obtainable with two games a week, but it was pretty hard and a struggle at times. Throughout, I took advantage of modern remakes and backwards compatibility features, especially for the older games. For a few of the weird titles, I used emulators just to be clear. I ended up having to buy a few games and a few pieces of old tech as you will see. I ended up being able to play four Call of Duty apps that were removed off the App Store. I contacted people all over through Reddit, Discord, Facebook, YouTube, email, even two main developers, one for the original Call of Duty Java game and one for a Windows Call of Duty 2 game, so that was pretty cool. And initially I was going to use those Prima game guide books you see everywhere for information, but I just used the internet and I went deep. I got two viruses, I encountered Dot Onion Deep Web Call of Duty downloads, and I was just finding hidden game after hidden game that way. Now these are some common cliches you'll see once playing all the games, and I'll probably reference them later in the video. First off, 17 of the 40 games are World War II based games with countless similarities. Split country campaigns, same batch of guns, generic soldiers with forgettable names, all sorts of nicknames for Nazis, heavily repeated key war locations, and super repetitive mission objectives. And overall, with the more and more games you play, you'll see reoccurrences time and time again. You'll kind of see through the COD curtain a little bit, however things just an algorithm, 
It's not bad, it's just noticeable, especially these game qualities. I'll reference them a lot in the video. Most of the features are cleverly hidden though. They're camouflaged in the gameplay and I respect how they integrate them. And an obvious trend you'll see is graphics increasing. With Call of Duty being so long, it goes from potato to cinematic. It's a huge substantial change. Also a cool thing to notice and keep your eye out for is multiplayer maps are normally taken from locations in the campaigns. Sometimes zombie maps as well, but it's just cool to see those locations repurposed for another game mode. And with that, it's cool to see guns that are not in multiplayer. You're used to a certain roster and it's cool to see campaign exclusive guns. And lastly, one of my biggest points of contention with the Call of Duty series is how they handle checkpoints. I boiled them down into the categories of time-based, location-based, and kill-based checkpoints. I know they're an added element of difficulty, they just frustrate me most of all to be honest. If you're wondering, the order I played in was main series, chronological, then the DS games, then the Java games, then all the scraps. Know that I didn't record the first playthroughs of the main series, I did the mission select to recapture moments, I just didn't have the storage at the time, but for the smaller titles I did record on first playthrough. That means some moments are hard to create, especially glitches. Also note, I'm not 100%ing these games, I'm not like collecting all the intel and collectibles, I'm just beating all the missions. And for each game I will discuss more about my experience, less about the core content, the stories are too hard to recap quickly, just more of my raw thoughts. Yeah! For people who like to keep track I will include the title, the year of release in order, not day, it's a little too ambiguous there, main developer only for time's sake, and only the console I played it on for the same reason, and whether or not I beat it previously on whatever difficulty, and mission count, those will be included. Lastly, before the breakdown, this contains spoilers for every game, main character that's the whole thing, just know that. Anyway, let's get into the breakdown starting with game number one. Now the Call of Duty that started it all, the first out of the 40, Call of Duty in 2003 by Infinity Ward, it was originally only released on PC, which I actually used to have the PC disc, but I played the Call of Duty Classic Modern Remake, which is literally identical. It was on the Xbox Arcade and PlayStation Store, it was actually released alongside Modern Warfare 2. Anyway, it's 26 missions long, and I have beat this one before on Veteran. Now it sucks because this is a brutally hard game, and it's so early in the series and I don't want your opinion of what I think is a hard game to be tainted just because they talk about it so early but just right off the bat it's damn near one of the hardest most notable for its bonk ass save system with these health based checkpoints now the checkpoints only work in this game if you have a certain amount of health it has to be above a third and this is a med kit based game and on veteran you get no med kits so if you have to a certain percentage of health and you don't have med kits you're shot once or twice you'll probably die but if you survive you won't have enough health to checkpoint. So at that point, you have to flawless run the rest of the mission. That combined with overly long checkpoint gaps and broken checkpoints not activating if you don't step in the right spot, making it one of the hardest games. Now, despite that, there are some interesting aspects that includes that this runs on the Quake engine. Controller vibration wasn't even integrated yet. There was actually no sprint mechanic even in the game yet. And when you try to, you'll say no alternate mode, just out of habit hitting that same button. You switch to grenades in this game like a third gun. Their cutscenes weren't even animated yet. They were just still pictures. And in one of those still pictures, there's an Easter egg where apparently soap is in the background or something. I don't really buy it, but, and there was apparently just a lot of revolutionary features in this game especially with the explosion mechanics like a lot of stuff that's hard to see nowadays but back in the day was revolutionary now there's a nice feature in this game of optionally killing teammates which trust me they are annoying as hell because you have so many on your side now i'm not above committing a couple war crimes to get them out of my face straight up because there is a ton of them this is the first cod where they start that trend of the quotes when you die they will try to unsuccessfully motivate you with some stalin quotes which i found was funny it was also the start of a lot of other cod cliches like the blow up the flat gun missions like i mentioned which are prevalent in all the world war ii based games you'll have the mounted gun veteran traps also the start of whenever the game doesn't want you to go to out of bounds they place mines everywhere which is kind of a clever way to stop people without using invisible walls you see that in a lot of call of duty games you will find yourself popping in and out of aim assist just to abuse it because you honestly need to for a lot of these harder games you will come across superhuman nazis with ridiculous 
miss health and optic level aiming along with deadly mg42s which make maneuvering difficult as hell and you have to barely peek around every single corner now a lot of people forget captain price is technically in this game i'm not 100 percent if the timeline's right but his name is in here attached to a character now there's definitely some exploitable objectives where you can wait out shooting tanks or wait out killing enemies and the game will eventually progress so that was kind of nice to know ahead of time there's some brutal brutal god tier near impossible missions throughout the either damn getaway battleship tribbets pavlo's house v2 rocket site are some of the hardest missions in the series without a doubt like three four hours spent on each one of those no joke and don't get me started with the most broken npc sergeant waters there is a mission where you in the back of a truck using panzerfaust to kill cars and motorcycles anyone who's played this game knows what i'm talking about you're with this npc named sergeant waters who glitches out and keeps shooting the truck or shooting the ground close enough to blow us up and when he does that he uses the limited amount of panzerfaust we have that was brutal i hated returning to that mission beating it a second time on veteran there's a lot of weird funky stuff in this game like when you're sniping there's like the tiny sniper scope which they changed later in the series and there's a really bizarre grenade hitbox in this game as well i found anyway the game does have the best mission select individual checkpoint system in the series you can go back to each checkpoint and play which for, for recording purposes that's just great and i think it's sick how they have the really unique after credits where it's not just black scrolling name they have this guy running across the whole screen okay late discovery i ended up actually having to play the original call of duty on pc purely for recording purposes only and once i started playing i realized it's a lot easier than call of duty classic on the xbox and you also have to play with the square aspect ratio which is a little hard to get used to at first anyway i realized there was the mechanic of going from standing straight to prone without any crouch in between now what mechanic later in the series is literally identical to this this game dead ass has a dolphin dive in it the original original call of duty on pc has a dolphin dive i feel like no one's noticed this before but i just thought it was super cool to mention Now technically the next release is Call of Duty for Java based devices, also referred to as J2ME. It was released in 2004 by Informa, it was 10 missions long, and I haven't played any of these Java games, I'll just say that now. Now I'm pretty sure 95% of all COD fans don't even know any of these Java titles exist. These Java games can be played on a lot of different Java based devices, I used an emulator for all of them, which led to sound not working on most of them, so I try not to mention that as much. Their stories don't even close to replicate any of their console counterparts parts there's no similar names either and they just have one difficulty they never ask you if you want to go harder and they're relatively short and easy which each one took about an hour or two to beat now this was a tricky game to find online it was so old and plus i even talked to the main dev like i said and he didn't even have a copy i eventually got it and played though and you can pick your squad members and each one does their own unique thing you can actually accidentally kill your squad members which you really don't want to do because each one has its own use and you kind of fumble around each other and that leads to bullets flying all over the place but i got the hang of it later there's a lot of charming qualities in this game i love the alpha texture clouds that go across the screen the literal minecraft cobblestone textures amongst other minecraft looking things you can shoot enemies bullets mid-air like in wii tanks it's kind of weird you can't shoot and walk at the same time but the way you shoot is like a grid you're either shooting up or you're shooting sideways which you can get good at it and it's pretty fun you can make impenetrable rapid fire bullet walls that enemies try to walk through and on the v2 rocket site i found it really funny because there's these giant rockets everywhere but none of them explode and it's always funny how these missions are pretty calm but then they always start with like an ambush start right when you start a bunch of germans just rush you and every single mission despite how important and intense the situation sounds you're basically just capturing a flag like the main objective is just touching a red flag at the end now this one was actually quite fun it was like an atari sort of fun at the time i played it it was a breath of fresh air and i'm I'm fine with the no checkpoints it's an arcade style kind of challenge i respect a lot of the features in this game like the medic component where you can kind of finesse it and send guys out and bring them back to the medic and pretty much have infinite health it's a foolproof strategy and i also like in this game where anytime an enemy is behind a wall he's identified as dots so you're never really questioning where they are the only thing this game could maybe use as some enemy variants would be kind of nice but for what it is it's perfect i non-ironically like it
The next title is Call of Duty United Offensive, released in 2004 for Grey Matter Interactive. I played it on PC. There was no console releases for this game. It was 13 missions long, and I've never played it previously. Like I said, how I played on the PC, those controls were nice. I don't get to do that much during this whole thing. Some might think, oh, this is just DLC. Well, this is actually DLC with a separate storyline, which is the only time in the series they've ever done that. Now, I originally thought this was going to be easier in the beginning, and then I totally changed my mind after a series of very hard missions like the best stone and the tank factory amongst many impossible missions less missions than the base game but it took a lot longer to finish with increased difficulty like i didn't think it could get harder also there's not a huge mission variety which gets a little redundant in this anyway the game has some noticeable improvements from the base game with some enhanced features like long intense long lasting smoke bombs literal smoke screens the addition of sprinting and the ability to shoot through walls and barriers that wasn't possible before similar to the first game there are some tricky things to deal with like weird crouching and the mechanic of jumping over barricades and through windows not being in the game yet there are some really cool parts though there's a flamethrower there's a part where you get infinite panzerfausts at your disposal for a section i even like in this game how a lot of the nazi uniforms are white i mean it just makes them a lot easier to see it's a nice small detail it's got the first ever plane mission in call of duty which was really good actually it was hard as hell but i did like how you keep switching different guns within the plane and has a cool parachute conclusion there's also a funny hitbox tank mission which which wasn't bad and this epic train explosion and a mountain mission that was really cool too a lot of memorable moments you will basically nut anytime you see game saved cross your screen because it's got these same exact jank health based checkpoints from the first game so it is so satisfying every time you hit a checkpoint in this game there are such aim body enemies everyone is basically a sniper you'll be slithering around damn near every mission enemies you fight take thousands of hits to take down seemingly and you as the player are literally a one tap you have so many damn useless allies that only serve to get in your way and not get really any kills now there is some annoying franchise trends that kind of start in this game like the infinite spawns not moving slow objective thing which is like where you get to a checkpoint and if you don't move and you keep killing down enemies at a consistent rate you'll only checkpoint if you keep moving with your actual feet not in kill numbers there's also the mp40 over usage in this game and the defend the area missions which you know I don't like. There was some funny stuff to break it up though with this German raid which had this like lullaby music playing in the background which kind of was contradicting. Also anytime you kill an enemy near a window his gun will perfectly prop up right on the windowsill and also there's a weirdly a half-life reference in this game with two characters being named Gordon and Freeman which I thought that was awesome. Now the ending in this game is incredible incredibly noteworthy because I don't believe it was made with veteran in mind at all. Now no one has done it on YouTube. I have not seen one person complete this on veteran on YouTube and the one that did use cheats. Now I spent more than two or three months trying to beat this last mission because I had the lowest amount of health possible and you have to kill these stukas and kill these tanks. I realized if you stay under this train you can just wait for the stukas to kill the tanks and I tried for weeks. I gave it one attempt every day for weeks. Finally, finally, finally I beat it one of the most difficult top five missions in the entire series Call of Duty on Engage by Omega Soft, 11 missions long, and it's a different story from the original Call of Duty, but it has that same iconic intro. Now, I'd go as far to say that this has the worst controls in any game I've ever encountered. God, is this game hard. I was debating if it was the hardest game I played in the entire 40. Now, I played this one dead last, not only because it was hard and expensive to get and play, but I saw some footage early on and I knew it was going to be a mad doozy status on this one. Once I got the end gauge and the game, I realized off the bat the insane control mapping. Like check this diagram I made, literally 13 buttons on the right side of the end gauge with one or two commands for each one of the buttons, and right in the middle of that mess you have the right d-pad you have to use. You have the weapon switching button which you swap through four different things including a grenade. Honestly a mule kick on steroids. There's the interact grab button which serves as the manually picking up med kits when you run into them or manually picking up ammo. Yeah that's in this game. And surprisingly a jump feature all on the same button. And I found if you're not careful with that jump feature you'll yeet over those trenches so easy into a minefield totally on accident. You know there's a reload button which you can honestly still reload and have the animation even with no ammo. 
and my god, the D-pad situation in this game is unheard of levels of cancer. The left D-pad controls forward and backward feet movement and left and right hand direction. The right D-pad operates left and right feet position and up and down hand direction. Normally your left joystick operates the feet and your right operates your hand position, but they're literally an amalgamation of both. Are you kidding me? I did not see that one coming with this game, and I thought that control was just a given. You have no idea how hard it is to rewire the most muscle memory aspect of gaming. Like, Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, so once you get into the gameplay, right off the bat, graphics are passable for a phone. I mean, imagine even using this thing as a phone in the first place. Anyway, what isn't passable is the depth perception. Holy shit, your view range is the worst I've seen, period. You see a few feet in front of you. You can use the aiming feature to extend this visibility and reveal the enemies hidden within the thick fog of each mission. I mean, the visibility is just absolute garbage. Enemies can even kill you within that void in front of you. They can see you but you can't see them you'll have to rely on the features of aim assist kind of hinting their direction or catch them clipping through a wall that kind of shows you where they're at as well anyway i'm telling you i majorly struggled with this game in the beginning there's no checkpoints whatsoever with pretty normal mission length you will be 24 7 slithering around the map completely prone absolutely fiending for med kits i mean i would spend 30 40 minutes on a mission and just die on the last guy and i would be so so angry I wouldn't even know how to react. My thumbs were literally shaking at the ends of mission just because I wanted to pass them so badly. Honestly, I didn't even know if I could beat this game with how hard it was in the beginning. I would use my boys as sort of a bodyguard and shoot between their legs. I mean, it was just a given that you were going to have to do these missions several times to memorize every location of everything. Now, with that being said, I was constantly thinking this game is so unpolished. There's got to be some exploits. And once I looked online, I discovered a god tier exploit there's apparently a save method that is so damn nice you could choose checkpoints skyrim style wherever you want whenever you want in several time slots this is the only game in the series that has this feature and i would honestly save after almost every enemy death like i was abusing it hardcore it made the game ridiculous ridiculously easier. That combined with the atrocious enemy AI where you could confidently sprint through a map before the incredibly slow-mo, often glitchy, enemy AI will even notice you're there and react. Once I got the hang of those features, I was straight up running this game's cheeks. Like I said with the sprinting, you haul ass in this game. There's not really a sprint, you just walk really fast. In late game, I would run straight through a map, knifing, and I would just stop using the bullets. I mean, the knife exploit was so nice, and you wouldn't have to kill that many people anyway. With that being said, the game is still brutal. If you haven't been able to tell from the footage, Wow, is this game a framey nightmare. Enemies will spawn behind you. Enemies are so tanky. I mean, if you're not draining a complete mag into an enemy, they won't die. It's a waste of your time. The grenades in this game, straight up three inch range, guaranteed suicide. And then typically in CODs, there's that rule of three where you can do an objective three times and sort of move on. Well, that doesn't apply here. You'll destroy maybe like seven flat guns in a row. There's no sense of repetition by the developers. I mean, there's the awful crouching epidemic in this game. If you have a semi-auto rifle like an M1 Grand, you're shooting enemies, they'll crouch down, and the time that it takes them to stand back up, they'll already have healed, so you'll be shooting them for an infinite amount of time. And with you taking damage, every time you get shot, your head bobs up over the barricade, and so it's impossible to take cover in certain areas. Now, like I said with the flat guns, those are a given in every World War II game. I mean, the similarities don't end there. From the OG Call of Duty, some names carry over, similar objectives, some same voices, and some ideas identical dialogue and sound effect snippets that are straight from the main game. And some of the missions pretty accurately represent the classic missions found in the console version, even that dreaded Sergeant Waters bullshit. And you know, Captain Price, uh, he's in this game. Sort of. The loading screen matches, but once you get in game, he's just a generic soldier. There's very few, but some enjoyable highlights. I think it's funny how the crosshair is green over the enemies and yellow on friendlies. I was so confused by the friendly fire in the beginning, then I realized, oh, green means bad. There's crazy, exaggerated sound effects. Every bullet, when it hits the enemy, he's letting out a different death noise. And come on, look at the stair design. You see what I'm seeing? And come on, look at that! Oh, 
Line. And no joke, this game has the best minimap in the series. It shows a colored full map of the entire mission you're gonna go through with the objective markers and a moving little icon that shows direction, shows your guys. That I really liked. I'm not even kidding there. You know, there's way too many glitches to even list in this game. I encountered so many funny great ones, but I just stopped being surprised at the end. Overall, I know I spent a minute on this title, but there's just not much known about it and it needs to come to light. I gotta respect its existence, but like, where's the audience for this game? Like, where was the need? And come on, there was a multiplayer in this game? Like, what? And get a look at this gem of a video I found online where the developer is taking the game 100% serious, cracks my ass up. Death lurks around every corner in this game. There's lots of uh, shots being fired overhead at all times. Feeling the tension, you're always about to die if you misstep. Every level is meant to be an exciting experience that's uh, a representative of actual World War II combat situation. What we like to call it is the game beyond the game. When the game that's in their head or it's in their consciousness when they're not actually playing the game and getting them into a situation where they really feel uh, uh, they're part of the action, they're, they're excited by it, they can't wait to play again, your game has solid gameplay when it exhibits those characteristics. next title is Call of Duty Finest Hour in 2004 by Spark Unlimited. It's on the original Xbox, but I played it using the backwards compatibility on 360. It was 19 missions long, and I actually have beat this game before on Veteran as well. Now, I have a special liking for this game because it's a spinoff. I mean, it's not main series, and it's not super known, and it's just got a whole different feel with the characters and the cutscenes. I just really enjoy. <laughs> Now the campaign is split into countries, US, British, Russia, like a lot of the games are and how the earlier ones were. There's not actually a veteran mode, it's just the hardest difficulty is just called hard, so I played that. Some locations are similar to the earlier games, which I get that, I mean they have to hit the same main events of the war. There's parts I really enjoyed in this game, like when you're low on health and you have the red screen, you transition in this max pain slow-mo where you can just make up some kills while you're low health. I mean that's unique, that's not in any other game. There's some funny dramatic as hell enemy deaths also when you're on big open battlefields there's these orange lasers shooting all over around indicating bullets there's also a teddy bear reference in this game that's a little different than you know the typical cod known teddy bear you can also open doors when transitioning buildings which is a small but nice addition and i also like really like the soundtrack in this game like the music was going off at times quite grandiose this also was a really hard game so i had to employ every slime strat i knew med kits are in the game but they're pretty prevalent and it makes it a lot more enjoyable along with the tanks too they have regening health bless up for that that wasn't in the older games now with the med kits come the option to heal teammates which I'm not gonna waste precious med kits on my boys even though when I have weirdly a lot of them at times I just gotta hoard them because the previous game PTSD this game also includes the first 3d model acted cutscenes with a very unique visual style compared to the main series also unique tank point of views that I thought were pretty cool and immersive as well even though the controls were a tad clunky now the game does have some serious flaws though including some pretty bad lighting in the beginning of the game also it's pretty slow paced story wise there's some dicey AI and at times some cancer reload speeds also basically useless grenades included some of course imperfect checkpoints for sure and just up to this point just based off past missions the word stuka was becoming such a trigger word i just really don't like stuka missions unfortunately my disc was slightly scratched so it froze literally at the end of the mission right before it cut to black and it had me on literal ape mode like i was screaming i had to redo the whole thing actually in this game i had a really funny glitch where where I had this like super jump where I could jump over barricades. I don't have footage of it, but I swear it was really funny. And talking about glitches, the last mission that has no checkpoint, which is already unfair, but it was funny how I beat it because you're on this tower shooting down Stukas and I just get to this point where they stop spawning and I'm like, did I beat the game? One of the credits gonna roll, which I had a sniper on me. Thank God I looked out in the sky and I saw Stuka glitched out, just stuck in the sky. I think I have a picture of it, but I literally had to use every bullet in my gun to snipe the Stuka from so far and I shot it down and I passed the mission. I can't believe I had that sniper. Thank God. Also, this game is notable for having the Allstate guy, the you're in good hands guy, narrate the whole game, which that was cool. Marking the first major defeat 
of Hitler's armies. And Bryant Johnson from ACDC, a favorite band of mine, voices a character and is in the final credits, so that's also notable. Then there was Call of Duty 2. In 2005, by Infinity Ward, I played on the Xbox 360, 27 missions long, and I beat this one before just on regular. Now this game is a lot better for a lot of reasons. There is a major graphical upgrade, there's regening health. At this point, I was hoping the medkit days were over and i just found the amount of health in this game just to be perfect there's some crisp controls there's cinematic moments like the tanks rolling over the trenches and there's this really cool pipe mission where you traverse through this rusty hole covered pipe that's like one of my favorite in the series and just a major improvement on checkpoints because just how bad checkpoints plagued the previous games now this is an easier game overall big time compared to the previous titles there's definite hard parts here and there especially in the british campaign like part of the difficulty of this game is like the sheer length of the game and the length of the missions there is a ton of funny parts though like there's this training mission where you have to throw potatoes for grenade training there's stupid amount of checkpoints at time like rapid fire three or four like a quad feet of checkpoints which you know i'm not complaining i love that and even captain price returns which the more i thought about it it's literally Really impossible for him to be alive during this timeline you know with him being in the modern war but it's funny how he returns also the first classic teddy bear is seen in this game he's used for target practice the one that you always associate with call of duty i was a fan of a lot of the new features like the hold the steady new scope feature which is a present cod staple way better tank controls which allow you to juke out other tanks and the smoke bombs in this game are crazy like in united offensive like i figured out this foolproof way of checkpoint rushing where i methodically place down smoke bombs so i can just run through the giant cloud and get to the next checkpoint smoke literally disables aimbot now even with the praise the game isn't perfect with enemies employing some slimy last stand which i hate that no sprint like what the hell they took that mechanic out of this game I feel like is never talked about with this title everyone talks about the crazy grenades in world at war when cod 2 is basically as bad there's annoying ally battle cries where they blurt out super obvious statements constantly like the constant except i like it sometimes when my allies announce enemy locations in surprising detail which is helpful for certain sections a big factor in this game is how strict they are with friendly fire like that becomes a big factor in difficulty in some of the later games with always accidentally shooting your guys down when they're in the way so much and this game tripped me up with how the controls are switched reloading and throwing grenades are opposite to what they used to be so that was kind of hard to get used to some missions are split into two or three parts boosting the total number which honestly felt like a way a professor will say oh the quiz is only five questions but then splits it up into like five lengthy parts each there's some annoying cod tropes like the infinite enemy checkpoint complex that i explained that's back sadly and there's some just very hard very long missions i mean the clearing houses labeled a b c d e f that mission is so hard it took so long and that annoying whistle is back that you know you hear every time you die with within veteran you've better get used to that thing. Then on to Call of Duty 2 Big Red One in 2005 by Treyarch. This is another original Xbox game that I did backwards compatibility on 360. It was 14 missions long and I have beat this one before on Veteran. Now this is again another spinoff like Finest Hour and it has that spinoff charm that I love. Also similar to that game in the way that hard is the hardest difficulty. There's no Veteran. Now this is one of the weirder named CODs. Big Red One just references this patch that this division of soldiers wore in the war. It's a real thing and to get to the game it's not a very visually appealing game the graphics are kind of garbage honestly surprising that it was released after mm -hmm. con 2 just slightly but it is a spin-off sadly med kits are back but they're tolerable they're pretty abundant and that weird control switch i was talking about in call of duty 2 with reloading and grenades being switched is back and reversed so i had to rewire my brain again it has some redeemable qualities the game is more character driven the flat gun mechanics are the best i've seen yet there's new mechanics like the 
the small part where you wipe binoculars off and it has a great plane mission in it as well and there's leaning as a new control as per normal with these older cods there are some you know annoying aspects the bad lighting that might be because i'm doing backwards compatibility but the spin-offs generally are lesser quality big time delayed grenades a lot of mounted machine gun missions kind of a buns version of the m1 grand which is a great weapon in the previous games but it's just not that good here and it's kind of a bummer the campaign just breaks down into literally like four different types of missions but there are some not necessarily bad but just bizarre aspects of this game like weird reload animations mortar shaking the hell out of your screen when on the ground you can spin around pretty much infinitely faster which is just so funny apparently every gun's iron sights are misaligned in this game which i found noticeable weird invisible walls and paper thin concrete walls that you can shoot through but those aren't all that big a deal now the biggest thing this game has going for it is the hilarious ragdoll physics and glitches countless hilarious moments in this game that i'm mad i missed recording because i literally could have made a compilation there's this scene where you are riding in a jeep with a bunch of friendly npcs during a cutscene, and you blatantly run over a friendly soldier who got stuck in the middle of the road and you just plow them over there's another part when you're in a tank you can push your soldiers around literally on the front of the tank without them moving or dying they just all pile up in front there's another glitch where you see dead soldiers bodies stretch all over the map like covering the skybox like you see that a lot in games but it's all over the place in this one and there's this other glitch pilots will sometimes become detached from their planes act like they're sitting in a fake chair and just ride behind the plane this is easily the buggiest cod by far you'll see nazis spawn out of the ground emerging like zombies and there's times where there's scripted cutscenes where just npcs will blatantly commit suicide like there's a lot of sections in this game that remind me of the 3d models like the deserts in san andreas and like maybe first person shooters from the wii all these glitches and funny aspects make me like this game more than i actually dislike it <laughs> Then there was the second Java title, Call of Duty 2, in 2006 by Informa. This one was only 12 missions long. Now this is a definite upgrade from the previous Java title. The little bit of music that I could hear in this game I liked, and there's way cleaner controls, like especially aiming. Now missions are grouped together in years, which is a little weird and it's a little uneven, but I'm fine with it. Improvements include ammo is shown, dialogue boxes that are necessary to read or you will get lost, some solid sniping, there are some abusable med kits, better map variety, and I appreciate their attempt at making a 3d-ish world only using 2d animation and also you will play as several different characters which i like that as well there's also this part where you use false wooden tanks to confuse the enemy which that's never in any other cod game i thought that was cool like the weird lightsaber panzer aiming system enemies to me looked like the witch from snow white and at times they also looked like fire hydrants just funky looking characters also there's a glitch where all the trees disappear and you can literally just see around the whole map and i also thought it was funny anytime you wear the desert uniforms in this game they straight up look like hazmat suits the part that gets me a little bit in this game is when you're using normal machine guns you just spray and the game kind of chooses which enemy dies it's just rng bullet placement and that's the worst thing about it like you don't have super control of who you kill just the gunplay in this game was kind of frustrating like you honestly will be using the pistol for most of the time because you actually can shoot straight with that thing there are some triggering parts like some dicey airstrike controls it's kind of hard to tell what's a barricade and what's a two-dimensional object at times and there are some deadly grenade guys in this game like you can't even get close to those bad boys and there's a thing in this game that's prevalent in a lot of the java titles with all the enemies are crouched behind barricades and there's no way to inflict any damage on them when they're crouched they're pretty much invincible now there's actually some difficult sections in this game unlike the first one which was easy anything with the sniping where you could choose where your bolts go that was easy there's even cliches in these java games that are like in the main series like the dam crossing the rhine missions the classic out of bounds minefields everywhere which i'm fine with i just think it's cool to see it carried over The next main series title is Call of Duty 3 in 2006 by Treyarch. Played it on the Xbox 360. It was 14 missions long and I never played this campaign before. Now I always refer to this Call of Duty as the Cruise COD because to me it always looked like Tom Cruise in the cover. Maybe I'm crazy. This game actually had an alternate name in French in France called Call of Duty on the way to Paris. So that was kind of cool. But anyway this game is deemed one of the worst in the series and I didn't really get that at first because I just have great memories in this game doing split screen multiplayer especially with all 
bulk of vehicles you can drive around. That's really all I had to go off of. Over playing this, I pretty much changed my mind. It was one of the longest slugs through a game there was, and I was tired of the same World War II formula by the end. I understood the general opinion way more. I was just really getting burned out by World War II games up to this point, especially with how long some of the previous titles take to beat. I think people just don't like this game because they remember it as the one before Modern Warfare. I mean, the game just has a lot of the same. Same sort of tutorial in the beginning, same reliance on the MP40, same war locations. I mean, the game does make some major improvements though in a lot of areas. Like, teammates are actually kind of worth a damn in this game. And there's some decent characters. Um, it's a less cookie cutter than some of the other World War II games in terms of objectives. There's some new quick time events that apparently you can avoid if you try hard enough. Decently destructible surroundings, muzzle flash, visual improvements, cool mortar mechanic instead of just clicking a button you actually can dial in the location, checkpoint drop off locations like where you die you're set at a certain spot not where you literally were when the checkpoint happened. That was really nice. And there's also a feature to go to your previous checkpoint in case you get trapped in whatever one you're in currently. And just overall a big step up in graphics like I was surprised they still hold up in my opinion. Also there's a lot lot of cutscenes in these games like more than all the previous ones combined like I don't mind the cutscenes but the graphics are like low-key worse in the cutscenes and better in the gameplay which is normally the reverse during the gameplay there's like this distracting blur effect which you can get over pretty easy um the driving this game like multiplayer is clean I really like the vehicles in this game and so is the mounted mg42s and the tanks like they're all refined controls there's more shotgun usage in this game even though they're not my favorite guns to use but in some of these missions they work really well there's some impressive looking landscapes some nice sound design and this game has some great music that actually won some awards honestly in this game there are some memorable ragdoll parts similar to the big red one a lot of times headshots will result in a double backflip no joke voices are super echoey in this cave which i thought was really funny good work man and also, I thought it was cool in this game how they had a Polish campaign, which that was a first. I mean, it's cool playing as a new country. Also, there's a rowboat section, hell, a new vehicle. And there was honestly parts of this game that had me on a Half-Life vibe. I don't know, I just kept getting reminded of the game throughout. Aim assist in this game is honestly going to be your best friend with some of the more difficult sections, which there are. There's a handful of pretty tricky missions. Like in some of the previous games, friendly fire is a massive inhibitor. Accidentally shooting your guys when they're on low health is like a non-stop concern start to finish. Overall, not that hard, but not that great of a game. Then there was Call of Duty 3 for Java based devices in 2006, this time by Hands On Mobile, which is just M Formo renamed, and it was eight missions long. For a lot of these early games, they all have Java counterparts, and this one's visually basically the same as the last Java COD. The game is more detailed though, with better looking buildings and structures. These corny Java titles seem to actually get better throughout the releases. They're a little less linear, they're more open, made respect to the added regening health, there's a jump feature, there's small tweaks and additions like artillery damage rings that are added which those kind of little things really matter and you can finally actually aim with every weapon in this game actually some good continuity with the missions like there's a canadian and polish similar to the 360 but you just can't help but laugh at this game's existence like there's so many strange qualities the death noise is pretty much just a pitch down roblox oof we all pretty much look like plastic army men. You have to play Ring Around the Rosie with the damn MG42s just to kill them. And even the dead cows, aka killer ramps, carry over from the console version. It's a little tricky sometimes when tanks start shooting you off screen. Also with the tanks, it's funny how when they hit you, they don't actually run you over, they just push you out of the way. It's mostly a pretty easy game with like one brutal section where I truly had to channel my inner goat to be. And there's some lengthy dialogue boxes, like I am straight up tap dancing on my keyboard to get past them and a common trend with a lot of these java games is you'll be in the action you know in the middle of a battle credits start rolling and it's a see you later send off like it's just funny to me how they cut off so dramatically at the end and say like thanks for playing Now I bet you weren't expecting this. This is Call of Duty 2 on the pocket PC. Easily the most unknown, hardest to obtain Call of Duty for a hundred reasons. 
which I'll list a few. It is extremely hard to research. There's almost nothing online about it. There's no walkthroughs, very minimal footage, and what's out there is awful camcorder recordings. Screen recording this device is extremely difficult with these expensive foreign cords. The device I ended up using was a Dell Axiom 50V Windows Mobile Pocket PC, which I'm selling on eBay if you want to check out. This is actually one of the higher end phones that runs this game, so it's got the accelerated 3D version. I painstakingly tried to figure out how to install this game. There's so many confusing steps. I checked every single Google result, every single one, every forum, review, post, and I just didn't end up having the necessary files to play this game. Then I eventually stumbled upon a dev who worked on this game's email, contacted him, and surprisingly got lucky. He actually had an extremely rare physical copy, which I offered to buy, but he wouldn't sell. I don't blame him. So he sent me the files, and bing, bang, boom, I was able to play the game. I'll go a little bit more in depth in this one than I probably should, because no one really knows anything about this game, to be honest. Now, the game has a completely different story than the console Call of Duty 2. There's no veteran. It's just a hard mode. There's no voice acting, there's no similar characters, but for what it is, it's got some impressive 3D graphics to be honest. I chose to operate the game horizontally, you use a stylus control method similar to the DS, you also use the side buttons, which aren't that bad except for the fire button is right in the middle of the D-pad, so you'll be losing ammo unnecessarily all the time, and everything you need on screen is in the corners, which I kind of like that interface. Apparently you could project this game onto a PC screen, but that is a very complicated expensive method, so I just ended up recording my screen which I think turned out okay. Playing on this Pocket PC mobile device, it's not really ideal control wise. It's uncomfortable and awkward and my thumb really hurt with the way you gotta press the buttons. Anyway, COD 2 isn't horrible. The maps are surprisingly big and good looking throughout the Russian, British, and US campaigns and I got pretty good at the controls once I played the game for a while. The mission types are basically all the same with you reaching a swelling objective. You can see what I mean. You interact with that and just kill guys along the way. But there is, with how obscure this game is, so many, so many weird qualities, such as infinite range on every gun. That's for me and the enemies. We can kill each other from incredible distances with no bullet drop. Very thick, long-lasting red screens that will leave you with a red haze overlay for a majority of the game. Ammo count doesn't show individual bullets, it just shows how many mags you have, which is... I guess interesting. Grenades are so funny, they just plop. There's really no throwing animation. There's no knifing, but you kind of hit enemies and it takes like four or five hits to actually kill. You actually don't really need to kill enemies to progress. You can honestly just rush the checkpoints, but that's a little hard to do on hard mode. And every gun model that has a scope, you don't actually use the scope when aiming. And weapons and ammo reset at all checkpoints. Now, like I mentioned with the aiming, it's probably the worst in the series. Pretty much just a zoom. You're not using the scope, like I said, and the fire button changes to to a screen tap like all the controls get switched it's super confusing and you'll just end up no scoping hip firing the entire game and that just becomes brutal with this insane enemy accuracy long range now cod 2 pocket pc is actually quite difficult and frustrating especially when there's only a single checkpoint halfway through each one of the missions which can be brutal to get to there's incredibly stingy ammo like you'll be switching out guns just for a half a mag more of ammo straight up there's so many texture glitches which typically i hate ragging on the glitches but large portions of your screen will be covered by glitches that you can't even see your ammo count which that's super important enemies are incredibly tanky like they take a lot of bullets to take down there's a lot of confusing depth like it's kind of hard to tell which doors to go in and out of and there's a lot of bullets clipping through barriers especially barrels all the time besides that long list there were some favorable qualities when you shoot enemies and they start to bleed it kind of looks like watermelon chunks there's sections where enemies will literally emerge from the ground like coming out of water there's a thing where you can optionally kill your guys punishment free and they will randomly come back in a different part of the mission appear out of thin air basically when i first started playing i thought the bullets flying around looked like paintball and roblox weirdly there are collateral kills in this game like if enemies are lined up perfectly bullets will go through several people and kill and one of my favorite things about this game is you'll get to the end of a mission and enemies will just throw their hands up and surrender like you don't really see that on other games i thought that was a really funny weird ending now if you ever want to play this game it's super difficult to access but just know you're going to need a monster phone because I had to charge like 15 times. This game is a true battery drainer. 
Then, onto a little weirder title, Call of Duty Roads to Victory. In 2007 by Amaze Entertainment on the PSP, I played it on the Vita via a digital download. It was 14 missions long and I've never played this one before. Now this is an odd title, not very well known and kind of slept on with how weird it is. It's kind of a yikes on the graphics chronologically, but it is mobile so you know they're alright. I played using the weirdest controls. Since it's a PSP game, there wasn't two joysticks yet, so you had to use one joystick and use the D-pad for the right joystick which was difficult at first but then I started becoming low-key go at it with like the grid style aiming I kind of preferred it as a clean control method now I was kind of surprised that there was veteran in this game I was even more surprised with that survival mode that I talked about earlier you know limited healing at the checkpoints there's a lot of unique aspects of this game like the grenade menu noise or the bomb timer loading icon which honestly prompted PTSD triggers you can reload infinitely even if your guns full you can literally keep reloading the switch weapon and pickup weapon are the same control so you'll be fumbling around a lot and they also handle binoculars as a third weapon weirdly enough and every time you die you'll be greeted with essay length quotes also i mean there's a lot of good stuff here linear easy missions no giant battlefields pretty stress-free little to no retries for me comparable to recruit honestly and there's the mechanic of when you get close to an enemy it just knifes automatically which i like that and i mean the ai enemies they weren't half bad there's some commendable parts in this game like the nice auto aim feature that is just badly needed with the jank control so bless up for that i like the sort of status report they give you at the end of each mission with accuracy kill count headshot count and time it took to beat you actually see that in some farther later games but i honestly averaged like a 20 percent accuracy i told you i wasn't pro and about a 15 minute time per mission so that's not that bad that iconic death noise and all its annoying glory is back which i just get annoyed by in these games because you hear it so much but this one's really funny because when you're close to death like you're really red screen you'll hear the beginning of the whistle just to start up like it anticipates your death like it's about to cue the sound effect i thought that was hilarious because i was playing on the edge of death all the time <laughs> And this was a World War II title, which is redundant, but it was nice because I could play it mobily wherever I wanted. That was the first time doing this. Even though I never owned a Vita before, it was nice having that capability, even though I was getting hand cramps and my thumb was falling asleep, especially when you have to like claw the controls for certain parts. With this also being my first mobile title, technically throughout my quest, it had me nostalgic about the LAN DS days, which I wasn't as nostalgic about when I actually ended up playing them. Of course, I was back on that MP40 9-5, and blowing up seemingly thousands of flat guns like you do in the World War II games, sadly. It includes a cool flying mission, though, similar to the United Offensive one. It's pretty identical, except a little bit more restricted, but I like that. There was also surprisingly no Rise, tank missions. A notable thing in this game is how the Kerr 98 from all the previous games goes from garbage to literally meta in this game. Like, it is so good in this title. There's also some glitches in this game, like the ally and the enemy soldiers will be sliding around a lot, and your friendly soldiers will be, like, major glitches bombs anytime you're close to them it gets clunky this game also tells you to return to your objective if you get too far away which is honestly the precursor to the annoying return to the combat zone meme Then, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare in 2007 by Infinity War, played on the 360, 19 missions long, and I have beat this campaign before on regular. Now we're finally out of the World War II grind. This is partially the reason why it was so damn successful and well revered. It's deemed pretty much the best COD. There's a lot of jerking for it online. I never really got the massive hype at first. Granted, I didn't play it when it came out. I was typically more of a Treyarch kid. Now visually, this game is a nice break for the eyes. It's so nice seeing the modern war, I gotta admit. There's a fast death in this game though, like one of the harder titles for sure. Some very, very hard sections like the defend the carnival mission, the get to the landing zone part, and the no fighting in the war room mission, which is one of the hardest devoted hours to that any mission where you have a timer and you have to be at a certain time in order to checkpoint that's like number one least favorite type of mission it was like damn near impossible and then of course mile high club which i had to come back months later partially because it was at the end of the game and i just wanted to come back to it later it's so goddamn hard there's new modern improvements like the godsend flashbangs the red dots the noob tubes the modern bayonets the new weapon variety and i said see you later to the panzerfaust and said what up to the auto lock 
fucking javelins. There's iconic music in this game, great atmosphere builder with spectacular lighting, just great action throughout. I at first thought there was an Infinity War Treyarch connection with Nikolai being maybe the Nikolai from Zombies. I don't know, he was similar, but I saw people debunked it online. And this sounds bad, but I like the terrorists. I'm so used to Nazis and the German gibberish that they spiel. Hearing the terrorist was almost pleasant. I leaked the addition of the minimap in this game, accessible in the menu. Also, the generous checkpoints, slow at times, but not bad. There's some clean snipe in this game with uber accuracy never before felt. There's a lot of starts to continuous trends throughout the 40 game journey. There's some really long red screens in this game with some intense bullet impact. In this game, it becomes more obvious the COD formula, the chill mission, then intense mission, where the chill ones you do some stealth missions and then the intense ones are more battlefield driven. And I'm a fan of that. I like that changing vibe the whole time. And this game honestly started my strat of when in doubt, wait it out concept, where when there's a timer, don't work your ass off. Honestly, sit somewhere camp, kill enemies when they come towards you, and just wait for the timer to hit zero. This is also the beginning of a lot of my favorite mission types, like the night vision missions or the AC-130 missions. I love those. Most of the missions aren't all that revolutionary. There's pretty similar objectives to the older games with just modern skins. There are some annoyances with the thin walls used for cover. It's kind of tricky to tell the difference between enemies sometimes and friendlies. And there's this damn dog mechanic in this game, which I mean it's enemy variety, but I swear the mechanic barely works. But on a better Better note, there are some memorable missions in this game. All gillied up, the nuke dropping sequence, the sinking ship intro, and everyone always remembers the meme, knife the watermelon. I also think it's cool in this game how people really like this game for the campaign and the multiplayer. A lot of people just come back for the multiplayer, but the campaign is also a fan favorite. Then there was Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare for the DS in 2007 by Endspace. It was 12 missions long and I've never played this one before. Now for all the DS games, I'll just say it in the beginning, they all have a hard difficulty. And these games are way longer than you'd think. They're basically normal game length. Like they're longer than the PSP and the Vita titles. They also all have a feel of like an arcade shooter. And I recorded these on first playthrough thinking there wasn't going to be a mission select, but there is a quick play section available in the menu. Now there are very little to no recognizable names in the DS games and all the stories are pretty much basic as hell action plots. And keep in mind that the graphics could possibly be better on an actual DS. The emulator I used maybe dumbed them down a little bit and also know that the emulator makes sections sometimes easier but most of the time it makes everything way harder. Now into the game, it's the first DS game in the series and it had me nostalgic because I used to own two DS titles. Now the graphics are what you would expect for DS. I mean, they can only do so much with the limitations and they kind of have what I like to call polygon charm where everything's pretty much made up of basic shapes and just people mostly when they talk about these games, they just bash them for the bad AI, which is, you know, whatever. But DS games have those damn quotes like the console games, but this time different groups of people like Bob Dylan and Woody Allen, like names you don't normally see. Also playing on the emulator, my audio is absolute cancer. It caps out at a very low volume, so it's just ear rape the entire time. There are so many things in this game that make it way harder than it has to be like the game has the longest time to kill in the series you can either do a single headshot or a million body shots enemies take forever to take down and this also has maybe the longest red screen in the entire series you could straight up throw a timer on the screen for it and grow a beard during it also any guy with a shotgun is crazy crazy deadly like the difficulty multiplier was jacked up for those guys also friendly soldiers will pin you in areas and hallways every time you're going through a linear area you can't go backwards usually because your friendly soldiers are in the way and similar to that enemy soldiers are so incredibly dumb at parts that you'll be at the end of a mission and an npc will crawl into a grenade and just blow up and end the mission out of your control those were so frustrating parts of this game are commendable though and make worth playing like i'm a fan of all the side mini games that you play on the second screen with your stylus like the bomb disarming amongst many others every checkpoint your guns and ammo count are reset which makes ammo count never an issue but rip if you picked up a rare drop also in this game you can kill your own guys without penalty and use their guns so if you actually do get low in ammo just replenish it by committing a war crime on the bottom screen you have a gps that's like a non-stop running uav which is really nice to see where people are it makes the linear hallway sections really easy and just overall this game has like a decent story 
story like especially later like decent plot points there are so many notable components in this game like how there's literally only two soldier models one for enemies one for friendlies also to me enemies look like solid snake maybe it's just me and there's also this really weird thing in this game where if you accidentally pass a checkpoint they'll let you continue on through the rest of the map spawning no enemies like you can get to the final room it won't do anything but it'll let you also enemies feet are basically glued to the ground like they have zero movement they will move to a spot and stay there they will never try to flank you also in this game grenades fly straight through any graded floor which i always thought was odd another thing that is prevalent along all the ds title is how some enemies that you'll be trying to aim at and kill are composed of a handful of pixels like literally countable and this game has my new favorite character colonel dyke you gotta love that name then you know there's typical cod things in this game like calling an airstrikes long turret sections night vision laughable ac-130 missions that are a constant meme in all the ds games even the ac-130 enemies are tanky as hell and you know i guess these games are good alternative for the m titles that are in console you know especially for kids Then there was Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare by Glue Mobile this time for Java based phones in 2007 and it was 9 missions long. Now this is a switch in developers and they do this for the rest of the Java titles as well. Now right off the bat it looks better than COD 3 Mobile I gotta admit. The gameplay is a little bit more enjoyable like tossing grenades is way easier. There's a nice auto aim feature which I'm never not a fan of. There's a sort of knifing now which is just kind of like a close combat kill and there's a total sniper mechanic rework. Now I basically only enjoy Enjoy the Java titles for the similarity to old games and the countless memes throughout, like the dialogue straight out of being in a subway. Easiest stealth in any game ever. Every enemy doesn't even face you, so it makes killing them so easy. The game doesn't even attempt to hide spawns from you, they will pop up right in front of you. And the infamous, notorious, iconic Sergeant Waters returns in this one, and I still haven't forgave his ass after the COD 1 Panzer debacle. And playing on an emulator is funny because anytime you let off one bullet it's just crickets for the rest of the mission also something that i was majorly confused on is there's a timer for every single mission i hate that when there's only a few and it's on every single one and i barely found the exit to one stage with a second to go on the timer but i do enjoy the maze-like aesthetic of a lot of these maps in this one this is a game where you have to remember where you've been and where you have to go which is like a an element really never in a cod game enemies pose little to no threats and you can mow those mows down easy in this game there's even a glitch where my character said screw walls and just started clipping through as many buildings as possible and where he ended was i was just trapped on a roof i couldn't even get off i had to restart and the game ends on a meme saying to be continued like these games are just obvious promotion for the real money makers being the console counterparts that's the little purpose i can find in their existence to be honest Now, Call of Duty World at War in 2008 by Treyarch. I played on the Xbox 360, it was 15 missions long, and I've beat before on regular on the Wii, which the Wii version doesn't even unlock zombies because they aren't on that version. Anyway, going in, I knew most people think this is the hardest game, especially the notorious Heart of the Reich mission, which I was a tad nervous about. Now, this started the option of co-op when playing some of these missions, which I thought was really cool. I didn't do any of it, especially with how hard this game is, but cool that they had it. And everyone seems to forget that this came after modern warfare like with it being world war 2 and all it actually was going to be called call of duty 5 unknown to most people but it was controversial to go back to the war but it's still pretty liked by fans and once you get into the gameplay you'll notice how it's one of the goriest games in the series i also found out that if you shoot enemies heads off in this game they will still continue to scream which upon reading i was cracking me up and i had to try it out and you know the gore and the depiction of Japanese combined in this game actually led to a temporary ban in Japan which I found interesting. Anyway it was a breath of fresh air going against a new enemy being the Japanese with their unique fighting tactics being booby traps, ghillie ambushes, tree snipers. You know I was honestly nervous about the infamous Puji sticks I saw in Deadliest Warrior. There's this new fading grenade indicator that trust me is needed in this game. And you know it's a great graphic step up in this game. And there's a nice little mini map on screen too to reference. 
rounds. Like I said with the grenades, it's deemed one of the most toxic grenade games with sometimes five to seven indicators on your screen at all times. The game just wants you to move non-stop. That's why there's so many. It's definitely a very hard game. I wouldn't say the hardest, but enemies are just slightly less aim body than Modern Warfare, and I found the enemies to be way more deadly from far away than relatively close up. That's true for a lot of the future CODs as well, I found. Anyway, this includes some brutal missions where you have to snipe this guy out of a window, which in regular mode, you just have to shoot him once, but in veteran, you have to shoot him three times, which that was super hard. There's also a checkpoint gap and a half during this cave mission, which just was brutal. And of course, Heart of the Reich, which, you know, was hard as a mofo. Something that I love in this game is they took the zombie maps of Nocturne, Toten, and Varuk, and they actually have them in the campaign. Maybe they reference those missions for the maps. Anyway, I like seeing them. And they also use a lot of zombie sound effects they're used to hearing while playing zombies in the campaign as well. We'll surely have heard those shots. We need to get... There's some super dope weaponry in this game with the flamethrower, molotovs, a refined PPSH, uh, the ability to throw mortars, you know, the bayonet, which I just had a blast with, the flame tank, the M1 Grand, which you could reload mid-clip, which is pretty rare, and of course, the epic ray gun easter egg in the second mission, and an overall not super reliance on the MP40. I mean, the weapon variety is a lot better. Just in a lot of previous games, you use the MP40 so much because you start with so little ammo that you have to use the Germans' weapons, but this game, not really an issue. Checkpoints are pretty generous, but there are some checkpoint traps where they decide to save you is kind of difficult to get out of. It's a little inconsistent, and also there's some of the most BS in any game yet. There's this hard as hell mission called Burn em Out, which includes this common glitch. The NPCs that follow you, like Robux or <laughs> Robux or <laughs> however you pronounce it, and Polanski, either one of them gets stuck on a barricade and you literally can't pass the mission. I went back and Polanski was stuck and I tried to shoot him out and he, he just wouldn't move. I had to literally restart an already brutal mission. Mission. Anyway, there was some funny notable sections in this game. There's several times where I accidentally shot down my own guys and my comrades will be like, You, you are a true marksman, Dimitri. Right after I dome one of my teammates. And I love the Japanese soldier dramatic death noises, like the squeals and the whines. I thought it was funny, even though that's kind of sick to say. <laughs> Parts I weren't a massive fan of were like the kind of cringe dark level where it really wasn't that dark and the characters kept acting like it was pitch black. Also throughout the game you get stuck on a lot of surroundings and in this game there's the browning which reload you could take a nap during so I never used that thing. Also there was a lot of those World War II typical objectives that I can't stand. Honestly this game just felt incredibly long like one of the most draining grinds yet. Similar to COD 3 where the mission length isn't that long it just feels like like it took forever. Also, there was an offline glitch I had where I didn't get veteran achievements for two or three of the missions, and there's some of the hard missions, so I didn't get the final, you beat the campaign on veteran achievement, so I had to go back and fix that. But this game does have my boy, Commissioner Gordon as Reznov. He's one of the goats. I gotta end on that note. On the ledge, shoot him! <laughs> Then we have the meme that is Call of Duty World of War Final Fronts 2008 by Rebellion Developments on the PS2, 13 missions long and I've never played it before. Now I was actually really hyped to play this game because how incredibly weird it is. It's so odd that they still made World at War for the PS2. It is so ungodly different than the main World at War. It is honestly deemed one of the worst titles in the series along with the Vita title. You know, it's just got an oddball developer and the game literally only has a campaign like there's no multiplayer or zombies mode just campaign i ended up having to buy two copies of this game because the first one was scratched and the second one was two but i was able to do the classic press down method on the ps2 and i was ready to go i don't know why but i was surprised to see veteran difficulty as an option the game actually wasn't as hard as the world at war on 360 it was actually easy as hell it had some difficulty but that difficulty came from the visuals and the controls it's so strange how they have the same names from the main world at war in this game like robux and polanski but they're completely different guys pretty much apparently they got the same voice actors to do it but they didn't even get Polanski's title correct like he got demoted and what I've liked about the main world at war is how they kind of take a darker side to world at war more gory more intense but this title just feels like the early call of duties the one two three especially the pc ones this game just has horrendous graphics the worst looking on consoles I'd say the worst lighting I've seen in any game ever it actually is 
a darker take at the war. Like literally like stupid dark sections where visibility is basically non-existent and enemies will legit hide in opaque shadows and don't even get me stuck started with the tank at night mission there's this part where you have to shoot two or three tanks and you can't see them i had to try it like a hundred times now let me just list the amazingly weirdly awesome parts of this game sprinting is literally just sped up walking every time you leave to a menu and want to resume your game you have to reselect difficulty you can optionally turn off friendly names weirdly enough there are hilarious bayonet guys that will track you down relentlessly it is incredibly obnoxious every time you die you have to do two or three menu choices saying are you you sure you want to go back to the checkpoint like what other option do i have every time you die you get this next snap animation there's spazzy ragdoll corpses that once you shoot their body will twist up like a croissant there's parts where the music way overpowers the dialogue to the point where you can't even hear what they're saying and there's no subtitles to fix that any car 98 that's on the ground is basically a trap once you step over it you will most likely get stuck and you have to go prone to get out of it and there's a funny but really awesome super yank Yankee aim assist called sticky aim in the menu. This is the definition of a linear COD, like 90% of it is in trenches. And when you're not, every optional route is pretty much blocked off and there's a ton of invisible walls. And when you go somewhere they don't want you to go, they make up an excuse like sniper. That's also similar to in this game where you will die so many times without any sound effect indicating how you died. So you don't know what you have to fix or where not to go. It's just no explanation given, you're dead. This game also kind of affects you in the real world too, like the dizzying angle and it's a major hand workout with how much it vibrates during the mg42s and it's so odd in this game where there's only like three tasks you really do throughout the game like the typical blow stuff up place bombs but then your general will be giving orders for the other guys to do like you know go open that door go throw a grenade through the window or blow up that building but it's not meant for you the game is just so limited in the different tasks it's definitely in the so bad it's good category i mean there's some corny as hell hell qualities like the kung fu sound effects the hilarious cutscene where this japanese soldier surrenders in a conspicuous way the fact that if you add a little bit of sway to the way you walk you will dodge damn near every bullet i loved the instant grenade blow-ups every like instantly blow up once they hit the ground pretty much every single gun you pick up with the ground every single gun will be completely full ammo like a single bullet was not shot from it also in this game every enemy dies in one bullet there's also a gta style health system where you will die if you take one bullet to the head which that was very annoying at parts and just also parts of this game are mad frustrating like the last third of the game literally runs on an abysmal 20 30 frames pretty much some of the most difficult to maneuver around mg42 gunners there's parts where teammates will say they have you covered you take that as oh i'm in the clear and then you're literally instantly gunned down easily the worst tank mission in the entire series it's completely on rails and you have to kill certain tanks in a certain order and the path that it takes you on rails it's like perpendicular to the way your allies are going. It's one of the weirdest missions. There's some majorly finessable checkpoints and there's some checkpoint marathons. It just majorly varies there. And the last mission in this game is brutally hard with each checkpoint taking forever this game is honestly just a culmination of all my least favorite archetypes of missions this game is so unlike every other call of duty it partially reminds me of the awful far cry vengeance game on wii where it's like their source material is barely present it feels weirder than the spin-offs but i kind of respect how they hook up the ps2 players even though it was obviously made just to check a box Next is Call of Duty World at War for the DS, also 2008 by Enspace, and it was 26 missions long. I own this game. I used to play LAN Wi-Fi multiplayer with this game, had a ton of fun, but I never played the campaign. Now this is a split country campaign, typical of a lot of the World War II games. I love the new feature of the separate map where you could zoom in and out and observe where you're going to head and where the final room was going to be. There was a lot of great points in this game that honestly made me like it overall. Like you could snipe with almost every gun. There was some epic Dark Knight knockoff music that i forgot to mention was in final fronts as well but it's a straight knock off the main theme low key my boy colonel dyke finally got his sergeant promotion in this game and includes the mortar mechanic i like from call of duty 3 where you dial in the location also an interesting dual crosshair tank mission where one's for shooting and one's for shells that was okay and overall i think the game's kind of like got a golden eye appeal to it the way that everything's composed of basic polygon shapes there's a lot of fixed areas like better audio the time to kill is shorter it's 
low-key insta-kill, better aiming, there's collectibles now, there's achievements. It went from the longest red screens in Modern Warfare to the shortest in this game. A little bit of 3D platforming, you could say, where you're like doing some mounting and climbing missions. I mean, at least they're innovating a bit. The game does look a tad better as well. There are clear objectives, and the enemies actually move around, and finally sprint is a thing in the DS games. There's a ton of memorable meme qualities, such as the fact that you can sometimes reload during cutscenes I found. Literally, pixel peeking takes on an entire new meaning in this game. There's so many times where NPCs' soldiers' voices sync up and it sounds like a big choir of soldiers. And with that, also, the NPCs are super obsessed with the word emplacement. Use the emplacement of the podium! Which isn't used in like any other COD game. Another really funny weird thing in this game is how the names they choose are really something. They're similar to the names you see like in the ACT where it's just outlandish ones you never hear of. Some real spicy last names on display. Also in this game every time you die you get hit with this Black Panther drum send off. That was funny. You waddle around big time while aiming and moving. Which took some getting used to. There's a lot of in this game what I like to call the use it blow it up mentality where so many times you take a flat gun from the enemy you use it against them then you blow it up you take the half track from the enemy you use it you blow it up tanks etc that's in this game a lot and with these oddball mobile titles comes a lot of countless aggravating attributes like the difficult stuka parts where they're literally composed of max of 10 pixels the flamethrower in this game is majorly buns you'll have less deaths in this game but you'll die faster and i found out this weird thing in almost all the ds titles where if you are about to cause an explosion via a grenade or a planted charge if you don't watch it go off it doesn't always go off like I'll throw a grenade around a corner come back and nothing even happened it's such a weird thing and in a lot of these titles are these incredibly slow top-down plane missions which I commend them for trying I guess the checkpoint gun and ammo reset is back so don't get too attached to the gun you picked up because more than likely you'll lose it on the checkpoint also in this game getting out of aiming to dodge a grenade is something that you'll be doing all the time it's a major hustle and also sometimes in this game it's annoying when you're facing a panzer enemy and sometimes they're just shanking rockets past your tank but other times they're like on Chris Kyle mode and they'll nail your tank. I'm a big fan of the detailed mini games in the DS titles like I've said. The defusible bomb sequence that's actually kind of complicated. The several different moves required which you never really see in a defusible bomb sequence. I enjoyed the Morse code rhythm game, the first aid repair, and the other bomb defusal part similar to Simon Says. This game also low-key invented the 2019 Modern Warfare reload while aiming mechanic like that's in this one no one's talking about that there was a part in this game where there's kamikazes that attack the ship and you have to shoot them down but i got this glitch where it's impossible to shoot it down so i had to restart that boy this game includes one of the weirdest mechanics in any call of duty title where if you knife one of your own allies he will knife you back and kill you like that is so weird that an npc would friendly fire on you to the point of death you could say for what it is they did a good job i mean i prefer this way more than modern warfare on the ds even though it was really long and hard at parts and the fact I was fighting the urge to end it all towards the end of this game, but you know, it was all right. Then we have our fourth and final version of World at War being World at War on the Java based phones in 2008 as well, Blue Mobile, and it was nine missions long. Now I had to play this one horizontal compared to all the other Java games. There were a few qualities I did like in this game. I liked the big chunky visible bullets and you know they tracked right where they needed to be. There was no aiming needed. There was numerous blatant bad qualities though, like a step backwards graphically to be honest. Maps repeat themselves big time, there's no Japanese. Japanese, which is you know what world of war is known to have and i never even got the grenades to work in this game honestly the regening health i guess it's there but it's really slow this game is just like so empty it's just a useless easy cod it's just like the least effort given in a game i can cut them a little bit of slack since it's for phones but you know they proved earlier that the, these java games can be halfway decent there's never really a need to stop in this game because it's just so easy you can blast past all your teammates which there are a ton of there's no shortage of reinforcements if it's not bad in this game it's most likely funny like the guns literally only work when an enemy is on screen the quick mission cutoffs while there's still action going on like we'll be in the middle of a battle and bam mission end 
Your soldier has the weirdest grip on a gun, just grabbing it in the middle with one hand. There are some dramatic enemy deaths, hilarious walking animation where you're just looking and searching and lurking and you can even moonwalk. And there's even like a flamethrower with an auto aim feature, which is just awesome. The only redeemable quality this game really has going for it is I like how when you go in buildings, it gives you a building viewpoint. That's not in the other games, so that was a small detail. The biggest meme of all is like the ending. It just hits you with thanks for playing, bam, that's it. Like they feel bad for the audience for taking time out of their day to play this trash excuse for a game. Now we're finally on to a really good title, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 in 2009 by Infinity Ward. I played it on the Xbox 360, 19 missions long, and I never played the campaign prior. Now this is one of the ones I was most excited to play because of the huge critical praise. Even though I can't really relate to the insane nostalgia connected to this game because I kind of started after, when I was a Wii gamer there was no option for Modern Warfare 2, they just skipped it and went straight to 3. Now when you start this game and you choose Veteran, they hit you with 3 warnings selecting veteran they even try to recommend you a difficulty based off your performance in the training course which i thought that was cool i mean there is a lot to love in this game the iconic desert eagle the jelly blood meme the military vehicle named curb stomper corpses bleed after you kill them and i just this game is so much more enjoyable with all the modern amenities that come with a modern war such as riot shields predator missiles thermal heartbeat scopes subtle cool details like the red dot goes out when the emp bomb hits and with all that i thought it was funny because i found a blunderbuss on this terrorist and you know it's not fitting with the modern war kind of out of place but you know whatever there was some notable interface upgrades like a really good objective indicator system last checkpoint option in case you get trapped slow-mo breaching sections that are used a lot in the future games there's some pretty difficult parts especially due to the quick red screens and the seemingly fast time to kill for me and the enemy honestly you pretty much can take the game at a regular difficulty pace like it's really not that hard there's countless epic super sick cinematic moments throughout where they're very memorable such as the ice climbing mission, the snowmobile section, the underwater part, prison mission which was reminiscent of the Arkham Asylum, when you're at the White House, at the oil rig, when you're in space, the super iconic No Russian, which is just all perfect examples of how Modern Warfare 2 in my opinion has the best mission variety in the entire series. Totally shaking up the typical campaign formula with a lack of those monotonous carnage battlefield missions I dread. These never got old, it was always just a new unique location. And there's a great crew of guys you play with. Names everyone knows like Price, Ghost, Soap, even with the unfitting voice in my opinion because you don't hear him in the first game. Stay here and spot me. Wait for my go. An equally as good villain, Makarov. Nikolai's back, the one that I thought was a stolen asset from Treyarch. And that guy who yells Ramirez 19,000 times like the meme. Ramirez! There's notable sections that I recognize the teddy bear alternative from the early Infinity Ward spinoff games. Weird parallel universe going on there, low key. The ghost scene that had a mo in tears, low key. I prefer the modded version where Ghost takes the dub over Shepard and where they switch the models, but you know. Also, I don't know if it's based off a real mall. It's gotta be, but the mall mission in this game is identical to the Family Guy video game multiplayer mall map. I swear, maybe I'm crazy, maybe it's a real mall. Very little bad things to say here. Maybe one or two tricky checkpoints that damn dog mechanic was back but i just gotta say it's gotta be one of my favorite ones least grindy epic outro epic ending on rust super dope museum epilogue mission there's a kind of a ghost easter egg apparently it's just like killer story like there's movie worthy plot twist and i think this might even beat my beloved black ops campaigns Next is Call of Duty Modern Warfare Mobilized on DS in 2009 by N-Space again, 17 missions long, and I have actually beat this entire game. Now my logic back in the day was I had it on DS, and like I said, it was skipped on Wii, so I just counted this as Modern Warfare 2 for back in the day. Now this is a very, very difficult game, mainly because you die really fast. There's other reasons, like clueless, but a lot of time deadly enemies, and they spawn behind you very often. There's a really low ammo count in this game, so you're straight on scavenger mode like most of the time picking up guns constantly you'll find yourself purposely dying to replenish ammo just because that reset mechanic still exists there's enemies that are invincible to everything but airstrikes on turrets that those are hard to kill there's a lot of shooting from vehicles and those are really jerky and you're locked in position which is just a brutal combo controls can make certain parts difficulty multiplied especially the tank missions and the part where you have to snipe the mortar crews off the buildings is brutal 
brutally hard. It took me uh, like a hundred tries. There's a few enhancements for this title. Like they stepped up their cutscenes. They're a little better. The soundtrack kind of bumps. UAV missions, bizarre, but commendable. The shotguns are a blast and I swear they dumbed down the enemy aimbot. There's actually some helpful teammates. They mop up low key. And let me just make it clear. Any mission where you're alone in any of the DS titles, opposed to being with a crew is so much harder. There's some impressive map size containing some cool locations and contains the best mission in any of the DS games, which you have this RC robot, which you throw through windows and you stealthily move around the map. I really like that mission. That's a really cool one. And missions like that honestly archived some old memories about this game, but I really didn't remember playing until I saw certain sequences. There's a cool code mini game, typical of the DS titles. You know, my favorite parts, I love the mini games, which you can weirdly mission select to play later in the menu. I mean, they're fun, but they're not that fun. You could straight up make pixel art from any of the models in this game with the enemies and everything being really pixelated approaching 8-bit at times and some of these locations look straight out of a minecraft painting no lie there's typical corny parts like in all the ds games you shoot and throw grenades through unbroken fully intact windows terrorist i swear to god scream nay nay there's parts where you can lock onto tanks with a javelin through walls. There's this funny jungle mission where it's so linear and they just smush all the trees together to this big tunnel. There's an ACOG on top of an RPG. And there's absolute hilarious ear rape transitions in this game that come from playing on an emulator. In between playing missions or cutscenes, you will hear this just ear rape amalgamation of all these different in-game sounds thrown together but then sometimes it's composed of super sped up npc voices or these torturous screams Here comes a Anyway, there's DS cliches majorly present, including the insane pixelated AC-130 missions, which you're fighting enemies that are a single pixel. There are weird dud explosions are present again, where you have to watch the grenade to go off to make sure it actually goes off. Another trend in a lot of these DS games is once you get to the final room, you always got to backtrack to the extraction point. And it just seems like a superficial way to add length to the game. And also, again, the friendly soldiers pinning you in the hallway where they'll be behind you and you can't move past them or anything they're just constant roadblocks those same teammates though are gutsy ambitious mofos with infinite health that will just sit out in the middle of a battlefield and soak in all the gunfire because you know they can't die and you'll also find anything on rails and pretty much any of the ds games really relaxing because of the demanding emulator controls so i enjoyed those sequences i found that beating the campaign in this game unlocks weirdly a lot of game modes for a ds title and i also found that no one on youtube or really anyone online beats these ds games games on Harden. I was looking for mission help for some of these brutal ones and it's just non-existent. They're just deceptively long hard games that are a major slug to get through and you know just with some immense difficulty and some questionable checkpoint gaps and it, you just feel like you're going at it alone you know no one else is completing them on Harden. Then there's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Force Recon in 2009 by Glue Mobile for Java based phones and it was 10 missions long. Obviously this one is titled different than the normal Modern Warfare 2 with the Force Recon added and up to this point these Java games keep getting easier. It starts off with a banger heartbeat monitor B. And upon getting into it, I really like the style they went with. It actually reminds me of the console counterpart, along with the cutscenes, in which this is the only Java game with like extensive cutscenes. And you know, like the neighborhoods that it takes place in, it just feels like Modern Warfare 2 to me. There's charming attributes like the soldiers' helmets fly off. I'm a fan of how the soldiers got really tanky builds. When you kill them, it looks like they're wielding an axe, kinda. There's tiny little pixel bullets that fly around. The hostages in this game go from absolutely sobbing to move out, soldier! Like just a dramatic change and i like how you can glitch the rocket launcher reticle onto cutscenes there's pesky traits in this game like you can only regenerate health while staying still there's a really slow paced helicopter mission uh there's a part where i really got lost and i didn't know where to go so i had to scour through youtube to find footage to see where to go and the map in this game kind of stays the same it's just the neighborhood but i like it the turret sections are pretty well done in this game but they're really hard at a point where you can only have minimal mistakes like nipsey mode activated inner go activated there's also some interesting sniping it's got this gray bar overlay you don't really see all that much definitely the best java title in my opinion they did the console counterpart justice and you know it's just great looking 
Up next is the great Call of Duty Black Ops in 2010 by Treyarch. I played it on the Xbox 360. It's 15 missions long and I've actually beat this one before on regular on the Wii. Now this is the first COD I ever played. I started here. I just remember back in the day plugging the Wii component cables into the TV and Mason just dropping some mad F-bombs and you know this was my first end game so it was a little dicey. You know like I said the Wii version misses a couple missions and when I played this version I noticed missions I didn't remember on the Wii but for the most part it's the same. Anyway every game mode in this game just brings back major nostalgia. Everyone who's played this has left the chair and accessed the computer for the cool spoilers and easter eggs and you know the numbers meme in this game still has relevance. This has got my favorite group of characters with Mason, Hudson, Woods, Bowman, Weaver. They're just legends. They're voiced by big names too like Ice Cube, Ed Harris, Reznov, you know, Commissioner Gordon, Gary Oldman. With this game that's weird is people don't really know that it connects a little bit with World of War. Of course with Reznov being back but also you see Dimitri dying which Dimitri is the name of your character in World at War so that is kind of cool. I didn't catch on the first time. This game is back to older wars but it's Vietnam. It's Cold War this time so it's you know it's something different and it's the first time. I'm just so tired of every depiction of Vietnam's got those CCR songs playing or some stones like bruh there's other fitting music during that timeline. Their Vietnam depiction also comes from the movie Deer Hunter and and Apocalypse Now upon other references which you know I'm a fan of those films. The stories are getting so crazy up to this point it really feels like a playable movie. Like the campaigns have this whole new appeal in that way that they're actually compelling they're uniquely told and with this one it's a mix of real characters and fictional characters which I like that a lot. I like the two intermingled. I really look forward to the cutscenes in this game. The story had me major engaged with great twists. The, what made it more enjoyable was the fact that it wasn't overly hard. I mean it had a few difficult checkpoints but like there's parts in this game where there's a sick mission where you play from two different perspectives seeing two different things and you know the end the whole campaign ends with this cool ambiguous ending in a straight segue into a match on five zombies which is referenced during the story and you actually go through the map and the map for ascension as well i love the zombie map tie-ins now the prison breakout mission similar to the skyrim prison breakout mission is awesome and instead of a shank you have a slingshot in this one and yeah this is the time you wield your first minigun for the cod series so that that was awesome. There was a couple memorable glitches like this guy gets stuck underneath a vehicle which I literally thought the game was broke but then I found out he was the final enemy to progress the checkpoint and sadly there is a part in this game that is proven to be infinite spawns. I'm not crazy. There's actually a part where you have to commit running through a hallway because these spawns are literally infinite. That's in the mission executive order. It's just brutal. There's a point in this game where I remember my 10 year old self being so confused on the Blackhawk mission like not knowing what to do and you know in 2019, 2020 I can still still see why it's pretty hard to tell what the hell is going on but it is doable and fun and it's kind of unique there's so many lovable qualities in this game like the dolphin dive the new addition thunder gun easter egg like world at wars ray gun it's so cool it's low-key immersion breaking but it's fun as hell there's incendiary shells instead of the killable chickens you have in all the modern warfare games you got killable monkeys and pigs hell yeah i appreciate early in this game how there's no tutorial you just learn by doing you jump right in the action and they tell you what to do integrated into the story and thank god for no quotes or tips or anything to frustrate the game over screens just hit me with the black screen and let's get going like i mentioned earlier the beloved black ops series i just love this campaign i think it's great it just brought me back through a whole road of nostalgia just an incredible time did not feel like a job at all to get through Now we go from one of the best games to easily one of the worst. Now Call of Duty Black Ops on the DS released in 2010 by Endspace, 16 missions long and prior to this I've never played it. Now this is one of the more popular DS games because of the 4 unique zombie maps but we ain't here to play those. Most DS games include zero recognizable names except this one they have an Alex Mason clone, even goddamn Yuri might be back from Modern Warfare. Even with that said I knew they weren't going to do the matching storyline justice. Let's get the little this game does good out of the way just because it's not much compared to the cons. Now this game added this 180 degree flip button which never used but I can see its usefulness on an actual DS. Aiming is at its all time best. There's a better secondary gun access and display. I appreciate the ability to switch to tactical knife optionally at all times. Parts of it reminded me of Mario Kart DS with all the polygon landscapes especially Coco Mountain and there's music that is reminiscent of Pirates of the Caribbean low key. Weapons would always land perfectly upright when they fall on the ground 
ground, which is always something that caught my eye. And I gotta respect how ammo crates hit you with the full replenish, even the mag, like you don't gotta reload before max ammo. Now I gotta say there was some funny parts, like all these Russian enemies would say, Vamanos, Vamanos, Vamanos! Vamos, Vamos, Vamos! Like, that made no sense to me. At least I assumed they're Russian because they had PPSHs, but you just heard that nonstop. There's no new mini games in this DS title, really. There is this hilarious remove the bar from this locked door. It's supposed to be this epic climax of this really hard mission that I thought was funny, but anyway. Up to this point, the DS titles were kind of the bane of my existence. I dreaded playing them. I was just incredibly fed up with a lot of the cliches in them. They really require full focus, and I'll say it right now. I think this is the worst COD title. Number one, worst one. You know, forgive me while I go on a lengthy but speedy tirade on the numerous flaws. Missions were straight up taking 45 minutes a pop, especially in the second half of the game. This one took the longest to be out of the entire series. I had every enemy location and amount memorized by the end of some of these missions because of the numerous tries. It's some of, if not the hardest checkpoints in the entire series. One mission, no joke, had about six or seven checkpoints, 45 minutes a piece on each one of the checkpoints, and the ending was such god tier difficulty, and I actually accidentally reset my checkpoints by backtracking through the mission to try to find a glitch or something to get past the final checkpoint but I went back through and it took me back to a previous checkpoint like what game does that like this game is harder than GTA Flight School and Cuphead Dragon combined I swear damn the controls were brutal for the first half of this game you can't use the mouse for stylus so I had to use WASDA for my left hand and the number pad for the right hand so you're doing two WASDAs for your joysticks which is brutal it literally sounded like I was typing a 5,000 word essay with how many keys I had to press. I got a tip from a friend that you can use an Xbox controller on the DS emulator, so I tried that out and it kinda helped, but the game just freaks out when you try to remap controls. Granted, those are emulator issues. Anyway, they implement stupid difficulty increasers in this game, like removing your crosshairs on Harden, that's so dumb. And also, every time you respawn, you respawn with less and less ammo incrementally. Why would you do that? What a weird thing to take away from a struggling player, especially if they're doing bad and they're dying continually. Like, why limit a player that plays in the DS? I don't know. I thought that was such a weird mechanic. There's a damn epidemic in the DS games. Really bad in this one where anytime you shoot an enemy, they hit you with the instant crouch and that makes them way harder to kill. And every single time you try to kill an enemy, they're super unpredictable and they're really hard to hit. Like they're hitting these fat jukes. They're engaging matrix mode and you just cannot even get a bullet on them. There's a huge issue in this game where half the enemies use these one shot snipers as if they were literal shotguns, like literally all toting snipers. This game is legitimately unrealistic mode for pretty much half the game and that and so many other reasons make this a stupidly ridiculously hard game and i'd say one of the hardest gaming moments for me like dead ass you seemingly get shot through cover all the time and so many times you will get shot through little opaque bushes that you can't see the enemy through there's a hard as hell helicopter part where you have no clue where you're getting shot from and apparently even though you're five six hundred feet up in the air the game hits you with you died to a grenade like i'm in a helicopter what what kind of explanation is that also during that mission your helicopter can be on its last breath like it'll literally be in flames and during the cutscene they'll like replace the model out i noticed that there's god awful tactical strike team-esque missions where you pointlessly put your soldiers in these super obvious spots where the enemies are coming in that was just so unneeded you set in the edge of your seeds during cutscene transitions when they cut to black but you never know if that's a scripted event or you're gonna die for the thousandth time there's toxic iron sights awful recoil rage inducing stealth sections they got rid of the minimap feature that I loved in the other DS games. The lips on the map on the UAV down below are literally inconsistent as hell. Any curved hilly ground yanks your cursor around like crazy and you can't aim. At times you can tell they tried to replicate Black Ops like the console version, but they just fail epically. There's jank ass RPGs, mislabeled guns, weirdest on rail rules ever where sometimes you can move, but sometimes you can't move. Terrorists have a hell of an arm where they can literally throw basically football fields length where you can throw a mere couple inches. They hurl those suckers miles now i'll try to calm down a little bit like like modern warfare mobilized anything with your teammates is a thousand times easier i'm talking mountains easier because they take a lot of the gunfire off of you and not everything's aimbotted on your literal forehead and also anytime a gun drops in front of you you have to be lightning fast to pick it up because those boys despawn on a dime also i was searching for glitches like i said to try to finesse sections and i got close to breaking the game a little bit but it was just awful i'm pulling desperate tactics to try to beat some of these impossible parts and you know I, I know everyone's wondering in these DS games and you know I can confirm collaterals triple headshot collaterals
collaterals, they're not possible. I, mean, I was trying everything in this game. I was trying collaterals. I'm sorry to disappoint, but it's just not a thing. Like, honestly, f the last mission, I gotta say, like, I was so exhausted at this point. I came back a month later to play it. Like, it was, it's so hard. The timer is so unfair. I was just primal with rage in this game. Bloodshot eyes. I was on the Anakin, I hate you mode. Like, just deep hatred. Zero playability. Little garbage. Beyond memeing on. Most negative. I'm sorry. I just had to let the people know. Don't play this game. Then there was Call of Duty Black Ops Mobile in 2010 by Glue Mobile, and it was 15 missions long. Now this is the only Java game with mobile actually being in the title. It was the last Java game, thank god, and when I first heard about this game, I guessed and ended up being correct on thinking that their version of Black Ops was only going to be a Vietnam. And I'll tell you right now, they did not do the property justice. Now the game is not awful, but I did technically play this game twice. I played some jank almost demo version of the game that was only six missions long. It's the one you find mostly online when looking up this game. I found out about the 15 mission version and the game's actually a lot better when I played and finished that version. Now one of my least favorite things in the series that really plagues the DS versions is I get when they're trying to make a unique story but sometimes the story isn't even on the same planet like as the big titles, the console titles. The mobile ones just stray a little far. Like it's Vietnam but everything else doesn't even close the match. For Christ's sake there's basically Nazis in Vietnam in this game and they're all fighting with some Vietnamese fighting style like hiding and booby traps like that's not a Nazi thing like the others I played this on an emulator but that caused a lot of weird occurrences like there was this looming dark texture that looked like some cloud that was following me and also the helicopter blades kept glitching on screen all the time which was super annoying there are some things in this version that are solid improvements over the knockoff bootleg version that I played the controls especially when you're throwing grenades while in cover is really really crisp actually in this game. There's pretty good looking underground tunnel sections. There's detailed character faces, a new boat section. It's interesting to say the least. I think it's kind of fun because all the Nazis perfectly line up and you can just mow them down. And the inclusion of semi-legit cutscenes. Now the music I swear is like an 8-bit version of a previous song from another game. Don't quote me on it. I don't have evidence to prove but it just sounds so familiar. And in this game it just loops incessantly. Now being a Java title you know there's going to be corny elements elements, such as landmines that look like fallen soldiers' helmets placed all over the place. I even thought they were Nazis that were like head deep hiding because, you know, they're fighting like Vietnamese. Corpses straight up looking like Silver Surfer. And with that, there even might be a DC connection. And there's dialogue boxes in this game where the characters almost have enough room to get in everything they're trying to say, but almost every time there's always one or two words left over onto the next box. And with the way you have to take cover and shoot at the same time, there's a lot of teabag showdowns you'll find. Now this Black Ops had a lot of questionable elements like dead enemy grenades being thrown posthumously the same map throughout the whole game you pretty much just switch between tunnel and jungle sections there's long path dead ends which only really result in a grenade replenish box at the end of it there's an auto aiming system in this game that's in present in a lot of the other java games but you just pretty much go into turret mode holding down the fire button and the game pretty much takes over from there and really no matter what the mission title is it's basically all the same mission objectives and another corny trait is just the super slow regenning health. Every time I was low on health, I would just multitask and do something else because it literally takes about 30 seconds. Scattered throughout, there's a lot of sniper towers, which can be kind of a pain, but you can either finesse past them sometimes, or if you choose to destroy them, usually a German is launched out, which I thought that was kind of funny. There's straight up Sonic style spike traps in the caves and on grass. Like where the hell was that in the war? That's not in any other game. And I kept running into it because they low key lure you in. Anyway, this game's really a meme. It's really easy. There's even a mission titled Walk in the Park. There's just a lot of hold tool reinforcement missions, a lot of blowing up various thing missions, sloshing through swamp water. I mean, imagine playing this game unironically in 2010, aiming for the Black Ops experience. I would save all my money for the console version and avoid this mess. I guess it's okay, but if they could give us some more maps and maybe a closer connection, eh, it could be something. Then we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, released in 2011 by Infinity Ward. I played on the 360, it was 16 missions long, and I've never played this campaign before this. Now even though it's not one of my past favorites, because of the visual style being a little darker tone, I'm very nostalgic with this game, and I look back at it positively, I mean I loved playing the survival mode with friends, that was just such a highlight. Anyway, the story obviously picks up where the previous Modern Warfare storyline left off, with some crazy high stakes this time, insane movie plot points, crazy action all around, you literally hijack a 
submarine like right off the bat i love it though cut's purpose is to tell a crazy off the wall story and they do it so well in this one and i respect the villain in this game lasting several games sometimes it's just a villain that dies at the end makarov is stuck around he's a bigger threat than ever in this game he's truly evil there's six cinematic moments like the helicopter attack part the sandstorm mission that reminded me of those dusty black ops 2 zombie maps the ugv robot part which you know there should be more of those type of missions the anti-grav save the president plane mission you know also like when the eiffel tower takes that fat l i mean modern warfare is a whole new level of stakes like we've gone from like blown up flat guns to unrealistic as hell crazy modern war which is sick i love it there's other cool missions like the cool flashback missions that give context to older missions in the series i really enjoyed those i love when they touch back on old iconic moments you play as a character named yuri in this game which i mentioned earlier but yuri is also name of countless russian comrades during the old world war ii games so low-key maybe a connection there you hear yuri! yelled in the older games like non-stop so it was kind of weird playing as him anyway notable features include fast time to kill becoming a signature of the modern warfare games honestly the fan favorite desert eag is back something notable in the storyline is how they had nova 6 in the black ops games well they kind of have a similar thing in this campaign the whole gas used as a weapon is a common trend in a lot of the call of duty games so i can't give it too much crap this game also weirdly brought back that funny corpse getting crushed in the elevator sequence which caught my eye in one of the earlier games this one i finished in a day though this was such an easy campaign like one of the more easier new modern games i mean i pretty much achieved my final goat form at this game because i was so used to like modern warfare 1 was such a hard game and modern warfare 2 and 3 just weren't as hard and you know aim assist in this game's got me on aim boat mode once again so that always helps there's a tad annoying parts here and there like the janky grenade indicator and the fact you know it's a modern warfare title so that means dogs are implied and the rage ensues after and sadly contains a lot of those open battlefield carnage filled bullets flying everywhere missions which i typically despise but they're pretty easy to work around in this game i mean the whole game honestly felt like a regular difficulty to me it really was not that hard and I never knock a game for being, you know, slightly easy. I like a challenge, but some games seem overly hard. There's also a thing in this game where you can optionally fail objectives. I don't think it changes much, but you can notice it in the checkpoint wrap up. There's no really true stealth missions in this game. It's all pretty run and gun. Checkpoints weren't really a problem in this game. They also had that last checkpoint option, which I love that. But in the AC-130 mission, it literally glitched out and sent me like six or seven checkpoints back. That was like infuriating, but that was like a one-time thing. It's interesting how they have individual names for each of the civilians that run by you like you can actually slaughter those guys and the game doesn't even really stop you you know this campaign overall has a really dark lighting vibe similar to the multiplayer maps which i assumed it was going to be it does still have a good atmosphere and the game's good i like the modern warfare titles i mean it's got some cool landscapes and some very unique mission settings which you know this sub series is known for Then there was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Defiance for the DS in 2011. It was 14 missions long and I have never played this one before. First thing I need to mention is after watching a couple walkthrough videos for this game just to get a mission count, I realized that decent graphics are obtainable. Take what I say about the graphics with a grain of salt because it, they kind of look good in some of these videos. Anyway, this is a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 port with Defiance in the name this time. Even though the DS games are hard to praise, this one's way better and easier than Black Ops on DS. Even even though I was nervous about going into yet another DS title expecting to dislike it but this time I really only have good and funny things to note besides the whole no crosshair thing again which is just a weird crutch but other than that it's positives there's a lot of small needed changes like different airstrikes better checkpoint proximity a great submachine gun class actually the brightest DS game ever visually pretty good unlike the predominantly dark console counterpart I appreciate the first DS Blackhawk mission over the typical AC-130 missions I love the fact that almost every mission is with your squad you're never alone which it makes every mission so much more doable what plagued black ops is the fact you're by yourself all the time soaking in all the bullets there's a guitar hero mini game that's kind of fun and pretty fast paced i love how instead of always blowing stuff up with the launcher use an rcxd this time and you go up towards it and you blow up tanks from beneath i love that little needed change every charge explosion cues you into the slow-mo sequence where you can just you know dome all the enemies i mean what's key about this game is just slight innovation it's the fifth ds title but they're still making 
making some good changes. There's memes on memes, of course, in this title, like the other DS games. My soldiers and the enemies are playing hot potato with the grenades. I've seen several times where they pass two or three passes before these damn grenades explode. There's a part where you're watching a cutscene and this message saying health is low, get to cover, pops up in the middle of it I thought was funny. Also, Ramirez may be back, the infamous meme. NPCs take zero breath during dialogues. They're hustling through what they gotta say. The facility ahead is a key resource point that Ivan wants to take. Command wants us to secure the area, but the pipeline is our first priority. Move. Leroy Jenkins Loki jumps in this game. He must be bored with WoW. No joke, single pixel reticles on the sniper missions. Like, those are actually kind of fun and unique, but they were a little tricky with the single pixel. And there's a cutscene where they talk about an Alaskan pipeline. That shit had me weak as hell. In this game and a lot of the DS ones, the AK-47 is the MP40, basically. You use it a ton. I always picked it up. There's parts of these games you wouldn't think exist after the fifth game. Like in this game, weapons reset after you watch a cutscene. A cutscene will queue and then bam, you're back to your default weapons from the beginning of the mission, which I just think is a weird thing they didn't change. I don't know how many times up to this point I've heard enemy patrol let them pass like that's in every damn game these sort of stealth where you see a big squad pass you and you just let them be that's like some constant con mainstay watch it enemy patrol let them pass but if you really think about it in these modern war ds games it's kind of a stretch they're honestly repping that old wardrobe the advanced tech is not all that prevalent they're not all that modern of wars and also up to this point i have better feeling the controls or maybe my inner go to merge but i was eating w after W on this game like I was getting pretty damn good and I should be on the 5th DS title. I finished this game like the console counterpart in a day. It was pretty damn easy. I say they went out with a bang in the DS category. They never truly evolved out that much. They kind of low-key graphically maxed out on the first entry but this is an okay title. Up next is Call of Duty Black Ops 2 in 2012 by Treyarch, played on the Xbox 360. It's 16 missions long, and I have beaten this one before on regular, and I got the worst ending the first time I played it. Just note that. Now, pretty much, this is maybe the biggest fan favorite up there with Modern Warfare 2. Extreme nostalgia connected to this game for anyone who's played it. Every mode, whether it's zombies, you know, gun games, sticks and stones, hijack, the diamond weapons, etc. Everyone loves this game. It's top five campaigns as well, for sure sure. I love the optional story branches with several endings possible. I'll show all the possible endings right here. Even though when I played it, I got the same ending twice. There's a lot of different choices to be made, but it really only seems like the final one matters, but I'm probably wrong there. This was just overall a very innovative title for Call of Duty. This is the first and only time they've done that with the storyline. It was an ingenious transition from Black Ops 1 being Mason's son combined with the old flashback missions, giving more context in the return of Hudson, which is voiced by you know, Batman, Michael Keaton, and you got crusty old Old Woods, you got Reznov, Kravchenko, and the satisfying surprise of Mason, spoiler, sorry, and great writing from the Dark Knight director, hence the Batman roles Loki, a great villain of Menendez with unique motives and legitly inflicting fear. The graphics kind of came to a halt at this title, but that's kind of because it was at the end of the seventh generation of titles. Can't fault it for that. They were pushing its capabilities, obviously. I commend the visual style they're going with this game, having a lot of future tech, but not going crazy like a majority of the fan base thinks they get with later titles you know too much into the future you know people don't like them but i commend them for the strike force missions they're innovative they're really difficult and veteran i came back way later just because i honestly didn't want to do them and they're optional at the time i did go back and do them though just wasn't in the mood but definitely unique and it even inspired a spinoff game i respect the mission briefs letting you know about what you're going to go into and i like the career records at the end recapping the stats and i like the added equipment you pick up mid-mission like armors or pair traps even also the access rooms that allow you to stock up your weaponry of your choice i mean so many cool new things wonderful parts like the decapitation machete intro mission that's just hardcore off the bat there's a menendez rage machete mission which that was crazy as well there's a unique horse riding part which was a first for the series but wow on the realism there like you were literally firing rocket launchers off of that the multiplayer maps are integrated into the campaign as well and the dolphin dies back and, you know maybe this is a hot take but it's better than the slide it's just more fun 
The modern futuristic gear is top notch in this game with the invisible camo, the climbing gloves, the wingsuit, the Titus 6 dog toy gun, the wrist grenade dispenser, the claw, the spider drone with the trippy camera angles, and the Menendez awesome eye chip. I always thought that was a sick scene. The music gets me every time. Plus, all the sci fi sound effects for this game is incredible. I just love that Skrillex club section. Treyarch refuses to integrate the last checkpoint option though in these games, which kind of pisses me off, which is essential for a veteran campaign in my opinion in case you get stuck or you want to re-enter into a certain combat zone but they do have my favorite time-based checkpoints which you know i love those you know every so often you see checkpoint checkpoint you don't think about it that much there's funny parts like always you know the, the tap x to resist that mechanic where you can throw mortars you know from world at war that's back there's a part where farad pulls these jaws of life out of who knows where the fact you're supposed to fear an enemy called pdf i thought was funny <laughs> on a ship called the USS Barack Obama. Now we have to focus on regaining control of the Obama. And there's a character that looks like Hillary Clinton. And there's a Jimmy Kimmel model. And like I said earlier with the horses, it's a shit show with the AI. Like one time it literally abandoned me and I could not even find where the horse went. The only thing with this game is I love it so much, but I definitely don't find funny and I heavily dislike the dumb Avenged Sevenfold ending. To me, it breaks all immersion and seriousness and ignore the fact that it's already cringe as hell band i mean i don't like them at all but i just don't like how they use my beloved characters some that are literally dead in the campaign and like woods who's in a wheelchair and they just you know turn some alternate funny joke ending it just i really pissed me off the first time i saw it and you know some people like it i'm not a fan Then there is Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified in 2012 by Nihilistic Software for the PS Vita. It is 15 missions long and I have never played this one before. You know, I've always referred to this game as Black Ops 2.5 because I didn't know much about it. But upon further research, I saw the immense critical panning in this game. A lot of people agree that it's the worst in the series. Not quite for me. But many say it's one of the worst of all time. Blaming reasons like atrocious AI, garbage story, countless bugs. People literally list like the glitches in this game. There's so many of them. Now this is such a loose connection to the Black Ops series with a nonsensical plot and the connection to the main series that's not really there. They add iconic character names as if they didn't have already established backgrounds like Mason and Woods are mentioned. They're super surface level storylines like they had potential to be cool side stories. I kind of like the Menendez tie in at the end but otherwise it was just lazy. Woods is weirdly voiced by the same guy. It's just weird to connect your name to this abomination and Mason's voice is frankly hilarious. It's not even close to the normal one. Awesome. Something's not feeling right. The campaign is actually composed of operations and time trials, which I didn't initially count the time trials, but I went back and played them later. It's actually split into three difficulties, with veteran being one of them, weirdly enough, and they're labeled off as of star systems, like three stars equals veteran. And it's just weird how you have a campaign level in this game, like the more kills you get during each mission gives you XP towards your campaign level, like just such a weird thing to implement. I decided by the end of playing this game, I don't really like playing on Vita's. I never owned one and I just don't like it all that much. I prefer triggers over bumpers and this thing honestly just felt snappable with my rage at times like and unlike the previous PSP title you can actually use both joysticks in this game which take a little to get used to but it was okay. Graphics I had zero issue with. For mobile they're actually absolutely fine. Some sort of cool touchscreen aspects. There was a cool section where you could shoot these cocaine and it would cloud up. I thought that was kind of cool. The mini map available was a plus and the fact they pretty successfully replicate maps that feel like Black Ops is something I commend them for. Also with the weapons, I mean some are a little bit nostalgic. The models look pretty similar. Now if you really break it down, this is an incredibly broken game. Aiming system is utter garbage. The overall controls aren't horrible, just every in-game mechanic feels super clunky. Like grenades, you can't even take partial damage from. Anytime you take any damage from a grenade, you die. The bullet spray is super inconsistent. Knifing an enemy results in you red screening for no reason. I don't even get that at all. They can even have their back to you and you still red screen. Also, flashbangs will red screen you and kill you pretty often. Another annoying thing was you couldn't walk through doors sideways aimed in, which was a huge annoyance. Also, the garbage AI that everyone was talking about 
the crowd is low-key correct the ai is pretty goddamn bad they will kill themselves stare at walls shoot their walls and kill you spawn in super delay or just fire their weapon non-stop which i guess makes them really easy to see their blip on the mini map just weird programming for them it's opposite to roads of victory in several ways there's no checkpoints which make this game frustrating and stressful as hell but what's even worse is the fact you have to re-watch the intro cutscene not being able to skip every time i can't speak for other difficulties but there's no checkpoints which makes you play in a whole different new play style it's just mad memorization involved the missions are really short thank god about a 10 minute average but even though they're short some feel like an eternity to beat with how hard they are when i mean hard i mean near impossible some of the hardest gaming experiences i've had missions two five seven and especially nine are god tier hard nine is retarded Hearted hard, ridiculous, out of this world, kill yourself, bonkers, ludicrous level hard. Five to six hours spent on it, no lie, I swear. It was easily the hardest mission in an entire series. I'm willing to say that. It's a bold claim, but it's true. Other missions aren't very notable besides the Mile High Club clone, the lame night vision mission, and the several timed missions, which I can't stand those. Like some of the DS titles, there's no footage of people completing this on veterans, so again, I feel alone in my quest, but you know, you got nothing to reference but you know i cranked this one out this was an absolute grind Now a nice change of pace was Call of Duty Strike Team in 2013 by the Blast Furnace. I played it on mobile Android. It's 16 missions long and I've never played this one. I've always wanted to though. Process of obtaining was quite difficult. This game was removed off the app store. The dev team was shut down and getting this on iOS is an absolute lost cause. I know how to get apps on phones when they're removed off the store but it's difficult especially with iOS. Anyway I used an Android emulator similar to the ways people spoof COD Mobile online. It's weird playing with the thumb joystick on screen all the time but once i got everything mapped out and i tinkered with it a little bit it came out really clean on the pc controls wise let me make this very clear i had to use a hacked version because that's the only version that would work i actually ended up getting two viruses trying to play this damn game because i downloaded so many different things you know this emulator also had raid shadow legends downloaded on it which reminds me of the sponsor of this video I'm just kidding, but anyway, this is during the Black Ops 2 storyline. Hillary's back, and they mentioned Menendez and his Cordis Day movement. You know, it is an improvement on the Strike Force missions in Black Ops 2. They add so many new elements. It's still unique. I still like it. Surprisingly good cutscenes. And, you know, the physics are good too. You know, a little ragdolly. I love that stuff. I appreciate the open roofs and the aerial way of looking at all these maps. It's just a really needed change of pace from a couple doozies in the past. Overall, impressive length and good quality. I didn't think there was a veteran in it, so I just started playing it but then once i hit level five it unlocked veterans so i had to go back the first five and beat them but you know it's whatever it wasn't really that hard i also found it funny in this game how the difficulties are normal or veteran like that's a pretty steep incline no middle ground there there's a lot of different play styles you can play with this there's the point and click drone point of view or just you know first person shooter which i preferred because i was on pc playing it i usually just did this one man team thing where i would just go kill everyone in the map and then just whistle my guys back i mean i didn't play it how the game's supposed to be really played but i still enjoyed it it honestly reminded me of the way you play console games where you literally are the only guy that's really getting kills you just pretty much drag your boys to the objectives which in this game the objectives are pretty typical for cod i mean it's get the documents blow up the buildings kill the target infiltrate the location etc etc cliche but there's also like collecting intel you know auto knifing like the ds slow-mo breaching like it's in a lot of the games snap aiming aim assist calling an air support chopper gunner section after action reports like the psp and vita games a lot of stuff we've seen seen in COD up to this point. There's this thing where you can create a class before you go into a mission and choose what you use which was nice but sometimes they just make the class for you because you need to have certain weaponry which I didn't really care all that much and like I said how I had the hacked version that came with a lot of infinite perks like ammo and infinite coins in the game and which is honestly nice I mean I would have liked to unlock that stuff myself but it's also cool to be able to use weapons that I can't use because they're microtransaction based and you know there's a lot of those in the game typical of mobile titles but this game was already a cakewalk on PC so don't worry about me making it easier for myself anyway there's a, a lot of Mimi voice acting in this game and you really don't have to worry about friendly fire all that much because each soldier is named friendly soldier so it's pretty easy to tell i like in this game how all the ammo on the ground is like minecraft drops where they're you know they're just floating there for you to pick up and there's this scene with an npc that looks straight like jesse from breaking bad dead ass 
Now you probably weren't expecting this, Call of Duty Online in 2013 by Raven Software, only made for PC and it was 10 missions long, never played previously. Now this one was even harder to play than Strike Team, this one took me forever ever to access just to play this damn game i've always wanted to if you don't know what call of duty online is it's a chinese exclusive call of duty which they have several methods stopping us players from playing there's methods people tell you on youtube and that those just don't work anymore you can't get on cod online the way that typical youtube tutorials show you how to do it once i was even able to download the launcher which was brutal i was fortunate enough to find some asian player who was willing to sell me his account and after hours and hours and days and days of trying to play i made it happen now little people People know that this game even has a campaign it's a super cool culmination of assets from both black ops and modern warfare with a little bit of ghost and advanced warfare when i heard about this this was number one most anticipated campaign easily for me the weapons are remixed from all over the games and they kind of have an asian style to them with some crazy textures and this game is just notorious for insane off the wall game modes like five different types of zombies game modes that are in no other call of duties when it came to the campaign it was mostly reliant off of modern warfare once i got access to the game navigating the menus was brutal i'd use the google instant translate app and i eventually found what was called story mode i also had to use the app during the game because there would be certain lines of text that i need to read in order to get to the next checkpoint anyway this has got the sickest arsenal of weapons yet most over the top designs camos and capabilities i love how the mini map can be quickly overlaid on your screen so you can just see where you're going there's infinite kind of non-existent checkpoints which is confusing but they're just always checkpoints like you're always keeping track of where you are also in this game out of nowhere you play this ac-130 mission which is weirdly realistic like i thought it looked really damn real in my opinion that came out of nowhere compared to the mostly corny campaign this campaign requires you to be online to play so it had some lag but it was manageable which that could have been a massive hindrance if the game was actually hard but the game only has one difficulty and it was easy extremely easy there are very funny almost shot for shot chinese remakes of iconic missions from the modern warfare storyline combined with their own unique missions my favorite thing they do in this game is they take a multiplayer map from somewhere in the modern warfare storyline and they just add a story to it and you just get from one side to the map to the other and they call that a mission like it's just so funny to me this is exactly what i wanted from the game corny and hilarious there's iconic characters like price soap and ghost with chinese voices <laughs> This game just ended up being one of my favorites throughout the whole journey. Hilarious aspects as, such as beating missions unlock supply drops. The red screen is a purple screen. It's insanely linear with massive blinking yellow arrows indicating where to go. They even repurposed the bomb ticking noise in previous COD games to indicate where enemies are. Cutscenes, they basically play the same footage over and over again with some indecipherable dialogue and then every so often the name Price will pop out amongst all the Chinese and that was just so funny. Price, watch soap. Also get an insane amount of health, like you basically are invincible and you can go on straight terminator mode on everyone. And also a notable thing was the Asian guy I bought from maybe was Blasian because like his character straight up looks like Dokes from Dexter. I love the respawns in this game, favorite in the series honestly, it's instant, it's like non-stop. It's like a multiplayer match where the action keeps going on and you spawn far away and you just run back into the action. I love that in this game. All the laughs outweigh the negatives in this game, hell the game is free to play play it's super content packed and they do modes that are way more experimental than any other cod the only con is it isn't available for everyone but on the other hand that kind of makes it special hell it might even be the laziest story that takes zero risk and probably the least cohesive storyline even though i didn't know the language i could tell but who really cares nova 6 blatantly mentioned officially fusing storylines and confirming the same universe between modern warfare and black ops and i'm just kidding of course but maybe i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure ghost is also a bad guy in this game which is hilarious he seemed evil towards the end again can't tell with the language anyway this game was actually fun very rare that a campaign is fun i love this game <laughs>
then on to Call of Duty Ghost in 2013 by Infinity Ward. I played it on Xbox One and it was 18 missions long and I have beat this game before on regular mode. Now I think this game is wrongfully overhated. It has flaws but at least they're trying something new, you know, branching off with a new storyline which doesn't happen all that often with them usually continuing on Black Ops or Modern Warfare. The game is known for funky multiplayer maps, the odd extinction mode, and the dog memes, but I just know this as the con, you know, where Snoop Dogg can narrate the multiplayer which that's some sick DLC. We made it through. What it do, nephew? This game was actually even planned to have hidden submissions, maybe even optional endings like Black Ops 2, but that never ended up happening. Talking about dogs, the annoying mechanic is back, and Infinity Ward said that's not enough this time. They took it up a notch with the wolves. The cutscenes in this game are very unique and artsy. They don't really fit the vibe of the gameplay perfectly, but they're cool nonetheless. The characters that the story is based around, the ghost, is this cool concept of this elite soldier being from this mysterious ghost division, which I think is a good idea. I actually like the direction they went with the story. This game is not without its unique, interesting mechanics and ideas going on, including the corner peeking mechanic, the walking on walls, the zip line dispatch, ripped at anyone who's scared of heights during several of these missions, by the way, Infinity Ward finally integrating half decent grenade indicator. They typically slack in that department. Mag sleeves, come on, those are cool. First sliding mechanic, updated sniping viewpoint, blurry background opposed to black, you know, nice little change. The dog cam during the dog mission. Shit, child. Man, that's a dude, dog. The awesome strobe attachment that you add to your gun and a super modern fast paced tank section. There's really only a few annoying features in this game like some crazy bullet impact and every time you knife it cues low key a mini cutscene. And I found that the guns were really loud in this game compared to the dialogue which was brutal to adjust when my roommate was sleeping. There's a fair share of sick mission moments like the dope intro in space or the insane San Andreas parkour sequence. Also with the giant hovercrafts, the underwater shooting part with the shark, the part similar to the Bane plane scene from Dark Knight Rises and there's a mission that's similar to Carrier from Black Ops 2 and they have this flood mission which is easily one of my favorites in the entire series I love that one and there's this cool ice getaway where you're like you're getting into the submarine under the ice it's just some epic as hell moments the campaign has its own aesthetic style wise noticeably different with its own color palette going on and there's honestly a lot of walking and cinematics not a ton of gameplay but it's okay it's like a playable movie basically Basically. Interesting concepts and visuals here and there, especially later in the game, but it's pretty generic throughout. Towards the end, there wasn't really any awe-inspiring moments, like there was a, this weird inaccurate thermal sequence. They were fine though. You know, I gotta respect the Toledo shout out in this game. You know, that's never been in a Call of Duty. There's this cutscene where you have to sit through and it's this traumatizing experience watching your dad take a fat L. That was kind of funny, but you know, screwed up at the same time. There's this real hard mission though in this game called Sin City with Riley, this dog moaning non-stop incessantly and your teammates keep reminding you don't forget Riley and you got to keep picking up his ass that was kind of annoying but you know those kind of moments are few and far between there's actually some good looking settings overall I mean I respect how they didn't kill the villain setting up a possible sequel even though I think we all know Ghost 2 probably isn't gonna happen Up next is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare in 2014 by Sledgehammer Games, a new developer to jump in the cycle that's normally dominated by Treyarch and Infinity Ward. I played it on the Xbox One, it's 15 missions long, and I have not beat the campaign previously, least I thought. Now I love this game, it was the start of the EXO trend, I went to the midnight release, like a lot of other titles I have some major nostalgia connected to it, especially the multiplayer. I wasn't huge into the zombies, but you know there's so many likable things about this game, it's the birth of the infamous press F to pick respect meme. I applaud the ballsy choice of jumping far into the future and including exosuits like some of their competitors at the time. Since exosuits came out, I preferred it to boots on the ground, which a lot of people stupidly jerk. It includes one of my favorite actors ever, Kevin Spacey, who gives major dad vibes throughout the campaign. You remind me a lot of Will in that way. Sledgehammer really has their own vibe with this game, like it feels a lot different and I've always said that they're one of the most consistently best graphics in the series with some damn impressive cutscenes. I feel like it's not talked about enough, like 2014 these cutscenes are bordering on real life. The lighting in this game needs a little bit of tweaking but visually it's one of the best games I've seen, don't get me wrong. To add to that it's got some top notch sound design, like the sounds of the shotguns, all the sci-fi sound effects in this game are just awesome. I'm a huge fan of the Tekken 
increased with the laser guns and the wonderful EMI or MDL, the Moors, with all the dope reload animations and sleek optics, and the new HUD displayed only on the gun. I, I just love those additions. Countless modern amenities like the gloves, grapple, exo punch, sonics, mute charges, overdrive, basically Franklin's slow mobility, whipping out an assault drone, a magnet suit similar to Lego Robins, a fly drone similar to the spider drone in Black Ops 2, and a visible cloak similar to that game as well, some nice modern fully equipped tanks, and some dope futuristic threat sensor grenades, which those were really a highlight. There are hilarious homing grenades in this game, which are honestly overpowered most of the time. How they work is you throw them up in the air, they detect an enemy, and they blow them up pretty instantly, but sometimes you throw them up, they think a little bit, and if they don't detect an enemy, they dip. They say, see you later. I mean, there's other funny grenade questions like the EMP grenades that were tossed around all the time. Like, how do those not fry us in the exosuits? I've always wondered that. Also, a funny part where you can shoot dead bodies that result in hit markers, weirdly enough. There's also an odd take on night vision this game. It's really bizarre looking. And it's kind of funny, but maybe annoying to some people, how you can unlock supply drops, similar to how you can in, like, COD Online and some of the more weirder COD titles, but, you know, that's in this game as well. I like how you switch up which exosuit you're using for a lot of the missions, but what I don't like in this game is how a good portion of the missions you're not using the exosuits, which I get is understandable, and they don't want to overdo it and have it be redundant, but it just made it lack the possible individually memorable missions, with most of them feeling like just a modern COD mission. It includes nice enemy variety, not often seen, with countless robot and drone types. One that you can even sort of freely ride on, there's some that kind of look Star Wars-esque, there's some tricky tanky mechs that you can even actually operate later. There's upgrade points after every mission, similar to the Arkham series. This was the first time for this, you can just upgrade your exosuit in different ways. And there's exo challenges post-mission that are an interesting addition, they show you certain things that you hit and didn't hit. There's not a ton of missions that stick out besides the simulation intro mission, which I thought was a really cool twist. There's this frogger dodging traffic part, and there's this gang beast style truck fighting. Also there's an uncod like amount of freedom during this jet sequence, where you only use your L stick only, but it was odd. There's this very unique stealth mission where you can only kill people by grapple kills. That was very different for Call of Duty and I was a fan of that. There wasn't really many hard missions throughout though. It was pretty basic difficulty. And overall the characters, they're okay. I mean there was a Johnny and Joker. I mean those are dope but kind of forgettable besides Kevin Spacey. There's not many frustrating aspects in this game maybe besides the incoming transmissions that block like 25% of your screen. Even the dogs in this game, I mean they weren't that bad. They're honestly beta as hell compared to the Modern Warfare ones. There's a decent twist but not a really satisfying ending. It's kind of got obscure pacing towards the end of the game and the campaign in my opinion doesn't live up to the hype that I expected from the multiplayer visuals. Not horrible by any stretch but like I said like I didn't know if I beat this game. The more I played it the more I remembered almost beating this campaign on 360. It just proves that it was kind of forgettable. Now this is the first of the three titles that were literally unplayable. It's Call of Duty Heroes from 2014 by Face Roll Games. I attempted to play the Android version and it was 27 missions long and I never have played it before. This game, like the other mobile games, was removed off the App Store. I tried playing on an Android emulator. I even owned the APK file and I can just prove that this didn't work. I attempted and I spent hours trying to play these mobile games. And like I said, trying anything on iOS is truly a cancerous experience. They just hit you with must purchase, must purchase, even though they're literally free games. Anyway, this is a server based game, internet connection required to play, literally making it unplayable because they shut down the servers. With that being said, it was shut down on December 22nd, 2018, and as a parting gift they gave 15,000 solarium, 100,000 crypto keys, and 100,000 medals, and now anytime you try to get info on it from the main website, they just redirect you to 2019 COD Mobile. Like I said, I've never played it before, but I read it was a real time strategy game that some would deem a Clash of Clans clone. It had some similar gameplay. It had a lot of different game modes though, PvP, Survival, Challenge, Alliance Wars, Global Conflict, and surprisingly a story mode campaign. Oddly the campaign is set in South America, Middle East Africa, North Europe, South Asia, and it's 27 missions long. In order to beat a mission, players had to beat one of two criteria in order to earn one star, and to earn three stars they had to inflict 100% enemy base damage. If you actually completed the whole campaign, they gave you a bunch of in-game resources like hero upgrades, and also Soap was unlocked as a character. You can take controls of units like Juggernaut 
juggernauts, dragonfire drones, VTOLs, and claws, and some iconic heroes like Ghost, Yuri, Captain Price, Ethan, Soap, Rick Toffin, Harper, Menendez, Specialist from Black Ops 3, and goddamn Riley. And you pretty much just build up your base and destroy others. And the game's just based around using golden oil to do that at the same time replenishing your shield. There's typical COD kill streaks in this game like Chopper Gunner, EMP Explosion, Predator Missiles, UAVs, Care Packages, Sentry Guns, Guardians, Sam Turrets, Howitzers, Mines, a weird thing I read called Sniper Zombies apparently in the game. There was a lot of microtransactions as to be expected. People seem to like this game even though it didn't invent the genre in the mobile game scene. It sucks I can't play it as one of the ones I was more hyped for but nothing I could do. Then it was Call of Duty Black Ops 3, released in 2015 by Treyarch, played it on the Xbox One, 11 missions long, and I've never played the campaign, weirdly enough, because I do love Black Ops. Now there is so much to talk about, I'll try to keep it concise, but this ended up being one of my least favorites, even though the hype was unreal and I couldn't wait to see where they were going to take my favorite characters. I was pissed they didn't continue the extraordinarily good Black Ops storyline. I mean, there was a weak Menendez tie-in. Menendez. He was a prick. And the numbers are kind of prevalent in this game, being the crows, which you psychedelically see. Anyway, Nova 6 is mentioned. There's a tie-in here and there, but they could have done a successful reboot if they wanted to, but I didn't even like the direction they went. I very much respect the developers for many aspects of this game that are changed from the normal COD formula. Co-op four-person campaign mode was actually an option. I tried it a little bit. I mean, it's fun to revive each other like you're playing zombies. And it's funny how you take two perspectives, but you're in the same body. You must be sitting on each other laps anyway they have a lot of changes like choosing gender wall running the hub area where you can change wardrobe you see your service record your arsenal of weapons the ability to choose loadout before and mid mission fighting in water mechanic collectibles instead of intel very unique map layout with destructible elements and an incredibly unique zombies nightmare mode unlocked after completion i was gonna do realistic like i said earlier but it just would have taken forever but after playing this game that would be so ungodly hard like beyond difficult i can't even imagine Imagine playing this game on realistic. This video would have been incredibly delayed. Now this is not a relaxing game to play. Actual tactical gameplay is kind of needed for this one. You actually have to create classes that fit to the mission you're about to take on. You've got to be on your A game. Like you can't really go brain dead autopilot mode like you can in a lot of campaigns. The whole structure and vibe of this campaign is way different. Don't go in expecting the same formula. I respect the change but I became not a fan of it after a while. There's a massive emphasis on the optional co-op which i didn't take advantage of so it felt weird playing on maps meant for more people honestly feels similar to like a spec ops or some sort of alternate game mode it's very different for a campaign there's so many aspects of this game that pissed me off like get ready because i got a vent the lighting is atrocious in this game thank god tactical mode which highlights every enemy can be turned on at all times otherwise you wouldn't see a thing it is a frame fest at times there's really no excuse for a offline game mode like a campaign to be framey. I really dislike how you're referred to as player. It doesn't really create any immersion in my opinion. You can't end up liking the character. There's some of the most tanky, obnoxious enemy types being the warlords, which are momentum killers. Your progression comes to a halt when facing these guys because they take so long to kill. Gotta equip the launcher if you even want to take them on. And if you did this unrealistic, I pray for you. Also, warlords combined with the abundant abnormal health robot enemies that have this new exo dodge feature that makes them really hard to kill and it's just overall all these slowdowns throw off the pacing there's an insane amount of ammo crates shoved down your throats which i mean i like ammo but it's immersion breaking i'm about getting engaged in the story they're seemingly randomly placed all over the game there's a part where you're in a burning building saving people and there's a supply crate asking if you want ammo like come on people need saved it's annoying how the biggest plot points in this game seem to happen behind the scenes like they're not during the cutscenes they're not during the gameplay they're just mentioned by npcs that always pissed me off during this game plot elements lose impact that way also they're stupid long missions i'm talking missions that take like two hours with not that many deaths they are incredibly drawn out at points and super 
tedious. They should have been slimmed down. It's like there are unseen levels of spawns in some of these missions that just take forever to kill. Also in this game, going prone is a constant struggle with it always saying obstructed, obstructed, and you know, you can't ever crouch, which is you know what you have to do in veteran most of the time. You kind of get a bang for your buck with how long the game is, but it's no joke difficulty and length. Phew. With all that said, everything wasn't horrible though. Actually, parts I did like quite a bit. I enjoyed the cyber abilities, like where you can use the force on the robots to incinerate them. You can hack drones. You can scarecrow fear toxin guys. You can summon a firefly swarm. They're all welcomed additions, even though a lot of them were useless, but some of them were essential. I love the raps enemies straight out of the multiplayer. There's also these robots that look like Ultron, amongst other cool looking enemies. I mean, that was what the game really had going for it. You're not fighting the same type of soldier. With that said, you're even fighting alongside robot brethren. Like, they are literal aimbots, like the definition. But, you know, at least they're getting kills and they're on your side. There's so many memes, though, in this game. Like, there is every title. Like, the 360 port of this game has no campaign. And don't even get me started with the graphics on that game. The Law & Order guy does the main role. And there's the Train Go Boom meme. Train Go Boom. You can equip crazy camos that you can wear in cutscenes, which honestly is kind of immersion breaking, but funny. There's this scene where there's this corpse right next to this water cooler. It just looked like he was so close to surviving. There was this hilarious slow-mo glitch I encountered, which I just had to record, where for an entire mission, the game was stuck in slow-mo, even though the dialogue was in normal speed. And these missions are already long, so that took forever. You messing with my mic? What about what's going on in that pinhead of yours? Yeah. Also found it funny how my character I made literally looks like Michael from GTA, which also had a weird voice attached to him, which surrender yourself to your dreams was okay. I don't know. Just the whole player I played as wasn't a fan. I also thought it was dope in this game how you could shoot robots in their charging stations, kind of like how you shoot droggers in the crypts in Skyrim. It's just a cool ability. Are some memorable mission moments like the robots emerging from the red mist or cool physics during the train fight. There are some single bullet explosions during the turret sections. There's this treetop mission where it literally looks like an Ewok village. There's this scene where the robots play possum kind of like in World at War where they just ambush you. There's this crazy water level and then there's this insane World War 2 flashback mission with a bunch of sci-fi elements and there's an epic surprise zombie mission which I was not expecting where you literally do like a round of zombies. For being a standalone story it's all right. It's got good cutscenes and some interesting ideas but I just think they missed major potential use the Black Ops name. The story honestly went from realistic-ish, like pretty typical expected COD storyline stuff, to like crazy, paranormal, bizarre, just really odd. Like this game took the biggest twist I wasn't expecting. I did not like the ending. It was not that shocking. The whole last mission is literally like movie length, where your character is reciting this cringy ass poem the whole time. It cannot overcome the warmth of your beating heart. It's just the whole thing is what the hell. I just question a lot of decisions made in this game, but I guess it's not garbage. Then onto Call of Duty Infinite Warfare in 2016 by Infinity Ward. I played it on the Xbox One and it was 31 missions long. Never played this campaign before either. Ah, the only COD that is more wrongfully overhated than Ghost. I swear, the people who hate on this game haven't even played it. Most people refer to it as COD in space, and then people just always mention how many dislikes the trailer got, which I swear so many people just did that for the meme. Despite not hating the game and actually kind of enjoying it, I still refer to this game as Call of Duty Infinite missions because there's so many optional missions making it really long. This was one I was really excited to play because I already love the zombies and the multiplayer was I but people really praised the campaign when it came out so I was excited to see what the hype was about. Like I said earlier I won't count the game that was sometimes bundled with this Modern Warfare Remastered just to be clear. To be honest when I first saw the trailer of this game I thought it was some DLC showcase for a previous COD because the campaign didn't really do it all that much justice. I never really made the connection until recently about the Advanced Warfare Warfare sequel maybe like similar title I really don't think they have much in common though when choosing veteran it's actually got a question mark difficulty mode above it which I found out a specialist and above that is YOLO which I've discussed earlier they are just brutal sounding with specialist being very limited but unique healing options and the YOLO mode being if you die once you get sent back to the beginning of the game now there's a cool robot partner in this game named Ethan which is apparently a fan favorite who honestly was a little dicey to fight alongside with you know the robot mistrust from the previous 
previous games but all the other characters are really like the definition of forgettable like i really don't even remember any of the names and i kept asking myself am i supposed to care if this person dies and also with characters people were really excited to see Jon snow from game of thrones and conor mcgregor who honestly takes a really early l but it's cool seeing those celebrities in the game visually the game is pretty damn good some marvelous landscapes i'm a fan of the different color palettes the explosions in this game are pristine the lighting is a step up from the previous game the gun design in this game is really its own there are some sleek designs and some modern aesthetic not yet seen and i think there's some pretty obvious star wars inspiration in a lot of these with the light speed ships and a lot of the robot designs but i was a fan of that i loved how each mission took part in a different planet which you're so used to just fighting on earth which you end up actually fighting on but each planet has their own vibe individual qualities you choose them through a solar system menu there's even this mission where you kind of avoid the sun which it's just really fun the whole game ended up reminding me of the moon black ops zombie map anyway it's got some of the dopest tech in the series with some anti-grav and spider seeker grenades there's a vaporizing minigun similar to a ghostbuster proton pack exosuits that are now just called boost rigs and some futuristic cybertruck-esque vehicles like with every new cod comes new mechanics and with this one there's energy bullet variants some character info logs to read for some lore every time you find a gun it pretty much scans into your pokedex there's a thing where enemies can take partial health and fall and enter last stand but then kind of recover health which was cool mechanic also new take on the leaning mechanic in this game as well there's a trippy grappling sequence uh, you can peek their doors there's a sick detail where you can shoot out windows and the vacuum sucks enemies out sensor in space there's a cool thing to notice in this game where each mission that you transition to it never really feels like a mission it's like one long movie like birdman or 1917 where it's one long cut there's no real loading screens and they're replaced by slow scenes like being in an elevator though the pacing is really weird in this game though because i was just mad confused the order i was supposed to play stuff in like a lot of these missions are optional but a lot of the optional missions you have to play in order to unlock the not optional ones the story was pretty forgettable the visuals was where the game makes it up though there's some notable things in this game that caught my eye throughout though enemies that look like bionicles they were some tricky boys no lie stealth portions similar to detective mode in the arkham games there's a custom class option which i normally just stuck with the gunsmith's recommendation and i also like how that gunsmith joins the battle at the end of the game i thought that was kind of cool you don't normally see him step over the desk even though i didn't customize that much i like the firing range option that came with it there's a sequence in this game where you can feel your friend's heart rate slowing down through the controller vibrations i thought that was really cool and they've never really seen that before and i also like in this game how they have interactive credits post game and they also kind of play homage to this joke that was in the original call of duty now a big thing in this game are the jackal sections which take up a majority of the storyline mostly because they're optional but i generally enjoyed them they're tedious but they were new and different rip if you get dizzy easily playing video games because you will on these you can customize it a little bit and it took a little bit to get good at it especially landing them i was shanking it up a storm along with being dizzy i mean it's a major light show during the whole thing i mean it's hard to tell what the hell's going on but the visuals are there though i gotta give them that the astro dodging throughout i thought that was cool the only thing with the jackals i didn't really like was the final mission it was this really shortly timed mission where you had to take out all these enemies indicated by red icons that were near impossible to see another weird thing in this game is like every game over screen includes in-game npc quotes it's kind of weird how they can just make a quote to fit the situation like the reason quotes are usually so impactful is because they find one that fits a situation so it's just weird they had in-game ones like black ops 3 i can't knock the length of this game because a lot of people make the argument that cod doesn't have enough content i'm just saying from a completionist perspective it's annoying but there's not a ton to knock in this game it's really not that bad opposed to what you'd think based off of the big fan hate chronologically modern warfare remastered would be the next call of duty but like I said, I am not counting it because the campaign is literally identical to the game that it is remastering, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare in 2007, therefore not counting, it is not unique. What the hell kind of name is Soap, eh? Now this game wasn't actually counted towards the 40, but I did play it and I almost counted it. But anyway, it's Infinite Warfare Jackal Assault in 2016 by Paper Crane Games. It's on the PlayStation VR and it's really only one mission long. I'll just go over it briefly because I actually did beat it. This little mini game is actually my first VR experience ever. So that was pretty awesome for me. I could easily see the effect wearing off after a few times playing. I mean, that could go for any VR game. That's really why I haven't bought a VR console. I just played this at my friend's house who had a 
PlayStation VR. Now I gotta say it's pretty immersive. I did feel like I was piloting a jackal. Pretty much what the game is, is a single mission where you control an infinite warfare jackal and kill skelters to achieve a high score each time. I think it exists to showcase the new feature that was going to be in infinite warfare, pretty much for promotion. Apparently kiosks were set up with this game just so you can see what's coming up in the next big Call of Duty title. Now when I played I only got 16 skelters. It's definitely fun but pretty damn trippy. Honestly gave me a little queasy feeling. Maybe it's because I'm a VR newbie but it's just a tad annoying with my sitting perspective being in the cockpit like your head's almost out of the ship like my head was above the glass at times and I was just kind of struggling to see over the dashboard. And you know everyone's always mad in Call of Duty when you can't see your feet in COD when you look down but hell you can see your neck in this game. Hell yeah. The reason I really didn't count it because it's only one mission. Anyway, for what it is, it's fun, it's free, and it's a cool VR experience. Then onto the second unplayable Call of Duty campaign being Call of Duty Siege. This game came out in 2016 by Face Roll Games, same developer as Heroes. I tried to play on Android and there's an unknown mission count. I could not get a definitive number after the extensive search I went to try to find it. That's why I said in the beginning 54 plus, the plus being how many missions are in this game. Anyway, it's another impossible to play online only game. It's a server based game so it was shut down, it's off the app store and they're just not that much info on this game online. I found out that this game was released the same day as Jekyll Assault weirdly enough and it's also in the Infinite Warfare universe. Apparently the game was cancelled before release but it was soft launched in Australia similar to how Heroes started but no official release. There's footage of people playing this and it seemed like a fair share of the public had the game. I even own the APK Android file but you get the same result as Heroes saying you need to connect to online. This game doesn't even have a section on the Call of Duty wiki. It's pretty obscure. Now this is one of the most unheard of of obscure Call of Duty titles there is. I was blown away to hear this. When I first saw the name Call of Duty Siege, I thought it was some meme Call of Duty Rainbow Six collab, but it's really not. A very unique title though. It's this tower defense card collecting game. Very weird, but apparently there was a single player campaign. I just can't find a mission count like I said. There's 40 cards to collect and you use them against opponents. Some of the cards include characters like Soap or Black Ops Specialist or Captain Reyes from Infinite Warfare, Ethan, or just other Infinity Ward robots. This game is described as command your warship, the retribution, to form offensive strike teams and reclaim planets from enemy factions that have seized power from the United Nations Space Alliance. To strengthen your position, you'll need to build up a strong defense to maintain your grasp on hard won territories. The universe is under siege and you're its last hope. Are you up for the challenge? Like I said, not much info on this game, but there were supply drops, microtransactions, it's just filled with memes. People seem to hate it when it was limited release. I think it might be possible possibly the most unique Call of Duty. Now onto Call of Duty World War II, released in 2017 by Sledgehammer Games again, and I played it on the Xbox One, it was only 12 missions long, and I've actually beat this campaign before on regular. Now this is Sledgehammer's answer to people not liking the two futuristic CODs, especially with Infinite Warfare, people thought they went too far. Also people think they copied Battlefield 1 because they went back to, you know, the World War II titles, but bruh, these games take years to make. They didn't just come up with it and pump it out in a year. Even though I liked this game, and I still do, and it seemed like a pretty positive reception when it came out, it fell victim to the classic people liking the game when it's first released and then when they reflect back on it they talk crap and you know it's the classic COD community, classic COD cycle thing. I just remember people liking it when it came out. First time I played this going in I was nervous on a yet another World War II title. I didn't want to do the flat guns and the Stuka bullshit but in this game they're there but they're not as campaign dominating as they used to be. I was also shocked to see those damn medkits back but they weren't that awful. People were like hyped to see medkits they're like oh yeah flashback to the old CODs but it's like you know once you put in the work and play all the medkit games, man, you dread seeing them. Again, Sledgehammer has those astonishing graphics, always top tier. Better than the Modern Warfare's and the Black Ops up to this point. Like the landscape, the historical locations, the character models, the guns, they look so damn good. The cutscenes border on real, I swear, especially at a quick glance. And you're telling me that's not live action? Some actually decent characters with some okay character arcs. You know, some recognizable actors too, the guy from Transformers. There's added gameplay elements like varied benefits each squad mate offers that are actually useful like I used each one of the abilities weirdly enough and there's this new optional save the soldier heroic actions thing where you literally drag soldiers inches you know to save them when they can pretty much do it themselves I thought it was 
notably funny in this game when you try to throw grenades and you don't have any it's like no fragmentation ammo what a pretentious way to say that i also thought it was comical how the silver helmets just fly perfectly straight off when you shoot them also there's the funny kind of annoying carry the girl section similar to how you had to carry riley and ghost and i also encountered a funny glitch maybe the best glitch ever where the sound cut off the game the med kit stopped working and i was literally invincible i walked around i did the rest of the mission infinite health i had to record that now there's the classic turret in the car missions with other typical cod world war ii missions like being in a tank or plane or destroying a half track or killing a mortar team on that damn mp40 hustle you know they have pretty much the same weaponry from the older games but they also have some underappreciated guns like the grease gun which i liked seeing but i actually think it made an appearance in maybe one of the spinoffs don't quote me on it this game is another one of those call of duties that jerks you with achievements like every mission they give you an achievement for beating it like these are the kind of games that boost your game to score big time are some cons in this game like pointless collectibles with like laughable descriptions a lot of quick time events i was a fan of certain sections though the epic train crash sequence that was super cool killer theme song one of the best in the series this really nice peaking mechanic that was sorely needed up to that point a sort of dolphin dive it was okay they kind of took the middle ground there cinematic objective markers locky aim assist and i really liked this mission where you have to look at this dossier and remember certain things about yourself and then you got to make dialogue choices later in the mission you sneak around stealthily with the, all these new stealth mechanics that was like such a highlight one of my favorite missions in the series for sure so unlike cod they had the first concentration camp sequence in the epilogue which is interesting i mean it's impactful to see cod has never tackled that subject yet Now the next main series COD you have to mention Call of Duty Black Ops 4 in 2018 by Treyarch. I had the Xbox One but as most people know there's no campaign. Now everyone was shocked when it was first announced that this would be the first Call of Duty to not have a campaign mode. Instead they wanted to focus on their other game modes like you know of course multiplayer and zombies but this time they did Blackout Battle Royale which I like that. I mean I like those game modes but like what I said with online being obsolete and eventually they get overwhelmed by hackers. You know what are we gonna have to go back? to like multiplayer and blackout are going to be obsolete when the servers are hacked to hell and people stop playing them so that's just my big issue with it i wasn't really a big fan of what they did with black ops 3 you know what they did with my beloved black ops storyline but at least they had a story in black ops 3 and they were trying a whole new thing and they had these solo specialist training missions which deliver some backstory now after actually playing the first specialist mission i could see almost counting these as a campaign technically they aren't labeled story mode single player campaign anything like that it's pretty much a different game mode altogether but there are some detailed cutscenes and they bring back woods which he's honestly really cringy but it's cool seeing him back at the end of the day these are tutorials though i just can't count them there was just a big deal made about this game because there wasn't a campaign so can't count it and up to this point it was a bad sign whether the idea of a single player campaign was even going to exist in you know future titles The third and final unplayable Call of Duty is Call of Duty Global Operations. It was released in 2019, yeah I didn't hear about it either, by Elex. I tried to play it on Android, it was 27 mission long campaign and I never played it and I can't. Some people call this game COD GO which I thought was some weird CSGO Pokemon GO Call of Duty thing but it's really not. It's yet another COD no one knows about. This one is so under the radar similar to Siege but this time it's described as a real time tactical war themed mmo game there weirdly is a campaign in this game and it's 27 missions long with veteran i can't play it for the same reasons i can't play siege and heroes online only server based shut down off the app stores this one wasn't even officially released it was soft launch in australia similar to the other mobile games but where i get that 54 plus that i was talking about earlier with siege and in the beginning of the video is there's 27 missions in heroes 27 in global operations equaling 54 with the plus being whatever number count is in siege apparently it's the same developer of a game that i've never personally heard about called clash of kings obvious knockoff of you know what the game was soft released beta tested in the philippines along with australia but never truly 
globally. It was shut down on September 27th, 2019, and instead of giving the players in-game compensation, they gave you codes to activate in their other big titles like Kings and other games, which is a weird send-off. The developers said that they could not bring the best Call of Duty experience into the 4X strategy game, which I mean, whatever. The game brought back fan favorites like Soap, Price, Ghost, you know, the assets that keep being reused and reused. And the game consisted of building an army, recruiting commanders, joining alliances, customizing a base, organizing buildings and defenses, pursuing research, or you can just play PvP and conquer other players, or you can play the campaign, which I doubt many did. There's some very interesting looking gameplay. I mean, there's some hilarious videos on their Facebook. They keep putting all these serious posts asking about people's thoughts and or posts about updates and people literally just respond with bug reports. Like one of the ads was, how did this scene make you feel? Someone literally posts like an air report that they had earlier that day. That shit had me cracking up. Just overall, the game just looks like a crappy mobile game that you see in just those clickbait ass scam promotion YouTube ads. The game is described as you discover a highly toxic and weaponizable element nucleum nm72 which threatens to upset global order as governments and private operators fight to control the limited nucleum supply the world begins to descend into anarchy at the center of the conflict is globus a malicious corporation hellbent on using weaponized nucleum to bring the world under its domination the only thing standing in the way is you i mean this game looks pretty similar to gameplay from heroes just with less characters a slightly different look apparently the game was an insanely buggy mess it was not around for that long bad public opinion overall from what i can tell a big fail with abysmal downloads leading to no official release Another title to notably mention is Call of Duty Mobile in 2019 by Tencent Holdings. I own it on iOS, but it's known that there's no campaign in this game. I actually play it from time to time. It is a good game. It's uh, previously known as Legends of War, like I mentioned earlier, also called Elite Squad back in the early beta tested days, but it was soft launched in Australia, which literally Activision has something going for Australia. I don't know what it is. No love for the US in terms of these weird limited releases. Anyway, it was officially released 2019 titled Mobile. This is probably a huge reason why you didn't hear about global operations last year because this was a way bigger deal like this broke records with 100 million downloads in the first week it's the best mobile game ever i can't lie i used an emulator on this game and you know pumped major cheeks online but i just felt too slimy so i had to stop anyway there's no campaign but it is an awesome game including multiplayer maps from modern warfare modern warfare 2 black ops mw3 modern warfare 2 advanced warfare and black ops 3 and infinite warfare and they have a battle royale mode similar to blackout from black ops 4 and you know very unique zombies mode i gotta say there's some seriously hilarious knockoffs of this game though with how popular it was so many knockoffs exist it is an awesome concept and it is good looking and it is a quality game i don't want to talk about it too much though because i'm here for the campaigns but hell the campaign mode might even release for this game they're adding stuff pretty frequently Now, thanks for sticking with me. We're on the most recent Call of Duty so far, Call of Duty Modern Warfare in 2019 by Infinity Ward, released for the Xbox One and it's 14 missions long. And now what an epic way to end this. This was an insanely good game. Since I've been working on this video, this is the longest I've played a COD past its release. But once I got this game and threw it in my Xbox, I realized you basically have to dedicate an Xbox to it because of the sheer size. Like these updates are massive. Anyway, the first first impression of this game wasn't all that great because I just thought it didn't look all that unique and maybe piggybacking off the old Modern Warfare name but it ended up being a huge hit and I realized once I started playing I was really wrong. I just remember early when this game was about to come out they were going to say all the missions were no Russians and when I saw the player discretion advised at the beginning I was hyped because you know I like a darker game. I like a, a boundary pusher game. Again they had realism mode in this game which is just veteran with limited HUD. It's really not that big a deal. Realism mode honestly would have not been that hard this game is pretty easy to be honest which i never knock a game for being that easy and if i would have completed this on realism mode they lump the achievements together like they do in black ops 3 where if you beat it on veteran or realistic you're getting the same achievement so it really just feels unfair and not worth your time but they also had a lot of interesting settings in the menu like a dismemberment meter like i was hyped i'm like this is gonna be intense as hell in the settings there was also an option to change juggernaut music which i thought they might be bumping something under the armor
but they also had settings that I'm not used to seeing like film grain adjustment and several types of aim assist, like three different types, which hell yeah to that feature. I was beyond blown away by the graphics in this game and the realistic look of the models and the scenery. Constantly impressed. I think it's safe to say it's the best graphics in any game up to this point. It's even better than Sledgehammer. Like the explosions in this game look so crisp. Visually, just something to behold. Like lighting is like, whoa. Sound design is like, bruh. I love how every mission has at least one moment of being controversial. And there's always that one scene that's kind of taboo there for the shock factor. Way darker than the other games. I really respect the ballsier choices. I mean, with the public being so damn quick to cancel everything, I respect them for going the direction they did. Even during the actual gameplay, the graphics, the movement, the sound, the animation just gets you actually immersed. Like playing this game was weird. Like never felt this experience while playing a COD. It looks like real life footage. It borders on real. Typically games don't have that effect on me and like during the cutscenes it sh it looked real. It actually looks like a movie alongside with the title screens and the transitions and the realistic war plot. I mean, it all had weight because, you know, it pushed boundaries. The story was impactful. And this new price, he's all right. I feel like they chubbed him up a little bit, but regardless, he gives off that badass vibe and that's what's important. The checkpoints in this game are so perfectly done. You never have to worry about them. They just happen when they need to. Like I said, they shouldn't be a main concern. They should be something that just happens when it needs to happen. Now, there are funny moments moments in this game though that's not without them there's several parts where you have to hold cinder blocks to kind of camouflage in there's a lot of times where you fire guns and like not even at people and the game will make you restart the checkpoint because it's negligent discharge a firearm will not be tolerated they hit you with that there's some great realistic and sometimes funny ragdoll death animations those were pretty damn real there is a scene that's funny but so damn unrealistic with this oil can silencer that perfectly screws onto your gun but i'm honestly a big fan i love those little weird tidbits and even in this game, they resurrect that damn whistle noise from the older games. I had to dig deep in the files for that boy, I swear. There's the infamous baby scene where you can optionally shoot it, which, you know, <laughs> I had to try that. And it just resulted in a black screen with some sort of message. There's other parts where you can just go maniac mode and try to kill some kids and they're deemed non-combatants. Like I said with, you know, the public being quick to cancel, they tried to drum up this stupid Russian controversy. The Russians were depicted as being too evil and Russia even banned the game temporarily temporarily it's like it's literally fiction like get over it jesus christ there's so many memorable missions in this game like there's this part where you're crawling through the tunnels and the fire rips through the hallways that was realistic as hell cool explosions during the rc plane parts the night vision was so damn good looking it actually came with real night vision kind of like the one i have from modern warfare 2 both that night vision and mine are working night vision which some people don't know there's a scene where you're crawling in the sewer rats which is a mix of shawshank redemption and batman there's this mission where you have to shoot these mortars up in the sky and they illuminate the field and i just thought that was really cool lighting there's this really neat top 10 missions part where you're this little girl and you have to stealthily move around this house and kill this big brawly guy it's so unique you stab him with all these little weird weapons and you crawl around through the vents like an rcxd and there's a part where you use your slapping mechanics and you even have to use a gun at the end which is really hard because you're a little girl i just that was so unique such a favorite mission of mine and pretty much my favorite thing about this game which some people touch on but it's not really appreciated if you haven't played all the games is just how they do all these small little changes to things that no other game has even thought about doing you can mount any gun to any surface using it like a turret gun and easily dismount it that was so nice you can open doors by creaking or bashing it in two different tactical routes objective markers that aren't always on screen but you can bring them up when you want you can hop over barricades sideways you can snipe helicopter pilots instead of rocket launching the thing down you can hurl grenades really far and the grenades roll around too. You can shoot while on a ladder, which that's awesome. You can keep aiming and reload at the same time. The red screens in this game are like black and white silent screens. I like that change. When you throw a flashbang, all the particles are still left on the ground, still red hot. Also throughout the missions, you pick up individual gun attachments and you keep adding to your guns. And that was such a cool component. They're kind of hidden throughout the map. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt. In this game, there's actually useful shotguns, which I know are on meme and multiplayer, but you know, giving use to a normal 
useless weapon class if you ask me. And they even have an option where you can watch the cinematic cutscenes in the menu, kind of like a mission select. The game knows they're so damn good, they know you want to go back and watch them. There's a part where you can disarm a tripwire, you know, they're in there so it slows down the faster players, like, I like that kind of small stuff. And in the missions, you specifically have to use host country weapons that are accurate to the country you're in to be discreet and to show no footprint. So many things in this game are just great. Playing this game just made me realize how far this damn series has came. This game was really impactful. It hit so hard. Epic ending. Like, just a great little tiny easter egg ending. It's just easily one of the best campaigns. Like, I can't speak enough praise about this game. Just a great way to end the journey. Before this journey comes to an end, I just want to reiterate that the 2020 releases of Call of Duty Warzone and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Remastered Campaign are not being included because they either lack a campaign or have one that's identical. Call of Duty Warzone is just a Modern Warfare spin-off battle royale game and Modern Warfare 2 Remastered Campaign is a campaign only game similar to Modern Warfare Remastered but campaign mode only, identical to the old game, just a spruced up version. Nothing new, but anyway, with those two recent releases, that sums up every single Call of Duty that has ever been released all 40 unique campaigns in the entire series 2003 to 2020. Now that we're done with every single game, here's the ranking of all 40 in terms of difficulty. Now I would deem the top 15 to 20 being the most accurate, the most memorably hard, and then 5 to 10 being like pretty damn brutally hard. I also listed all the difficulty factors that went into my decision making process on what's kind of a harder game, what's kind of an okay game, and what's like a really easy game. Some of the positions you might find shocking, maybe debatable, but ultimately it's just my opinion. With that said, if I was to choose favorites, five that really stand out to me would be Modern Warfare 2 is number one, number two is Black Ops, number three is Black Ops 2, number four is Modern Warfare 2019, number five is Modern Warfare 2007. Now I don't want to rank all 40 in terms of favorites, I forget a little bit of the elements, I've been playing these for so long, I started in September 22nd, 2019. And I'm finishing up around April of 2020, so it's taken quite a while. So I guess that's it. I'm pretty confident I got everything. Let me know in the comments if I've forgotten any game, because I, I genuinely want to know. I'd play any game that I've missed, and also let me know if you know a way I can play these Android games that I deemed unplayable. Or just let me know any cool COD info that I should have included, because I'm always down here cool info about the series. I hope you've learned some new stuff about Call of Duty that you've never even heard. A lot of this stuff is not even on the Call of Duty wiki. And I hope this video can serve as almost an archive for fans. I include that spreadsheet that I made in the description if you want to take on the challenge yourself. And I know it was tough on a few titles and I complained a decent bit, but just know I love Call of Duty a ton. And the series is like Drake's discography for me. They can't do wrong. I'm ride or die. Anyway, I'm racing to get this done before the 2020 COD release information. So I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next challenge I take on. Congratulations, we collect on completing the challenge. Great job on beating those 40 campaigns on veteran. Keep up the good work, Recollect. You keep it up. Wood says you are on the team.